I would argue that the situation that we are in, in terms of like the bang for your buck, as far as like what a subscription service offers is substantially better. I'm not just talking about Games Pass. I'm talking about like, I I, I had to recently sign up for a lot Born of those plus. TV subscription services. I, I actively have a fucking Hulu account now. I have an HBO Max. I, I My mom already had Netflix and we pay for Disney Plus. But the reason we did that is because we have a baby now so it's a lot of downtime, right? We're just like sitting and taking care of our child and then they're sleeping. So we'd like to watch something, but I don't want to fucking put DVDs in the whole time. I started putting it like in comparison. If I wanted to go out and buy like the Lord of the Rings collector set, or if I wanted to go buy some Batman movies, or if I wanted to go buy Predator, or if I wanted to go buy the latest good looking version of, you know, Studio Ghibli films, I'm spending like 500 fucking bucks. Those Blu-rays ain't cheap, man. Like if, if I wanted to buy like an actual 4K Blu-ray of something, it's 25 to $35. And I'm like, huh. So if I just bought one Blu-ray a month, it would cost me like 40 bucks, like potentially. Yeah. And if I bought two, then I'm, I'm in the hole like 50 to $70 or something like that. But if I just bought this thing, that's like seven bucks a month, that gives me every one of those movies, right? Because like HBO Max is like all the WB movies, like fucking here you go. Yeah. And all the Studio Ghibli movies and like all this anime shit and all this other stuff and, all, and Ninja Scrolls on there. I'm like, fuck, dude, this is kind of, wait, this is Ninja nuts. Scrolls on HBO Max? I think it's well, on HBO Max or Hulu or one of them. Me and and it's, it's Ninja trade. Scroll dubbed, it's Ninja Scroll subbed, and then Akira's on there. I'm like, fuck, man, this is really cool. Like this is actually, Simmons. <laughs> this is incredibly fucking convenient. So I just, all I'm saying is that I, I wanted those physical versions of those movies before I even, because I, I have, I'm, I'm a shitty consumer, right? I haven't <laughs> consumed dick for the past 10 years. I've been making shit to consume. So I, for, I got the first hand taste of it with like a smart TV and I'm just like scrolling through, like looking for stuff and then actually getting the first hand experience of like, fuck, we just fire up Princess Mononoke. We just, and it looks as good as the Blu-ray, we just fire up fucking yeah. Predator, just fire up Terminator, just fire up anything on Amazon it's Prime. Like, it's all about convenience, okay. man. It's all about convenience. Yeah, I, you, I, understand, I understand where, where Simmons is coming from, where it's like, it's good to own your own physical copy of things, sure. but the convenience well, especially in games. Having your favorite that, movies of all time. Is, Nowadays, yeah, movies is kind of different than games, though, because games, there's a lot of resell and, like, trading you can do with gaming. Yeah, sure, games you, are You don't really do that I, with movies. It, it, it comes down to being a buff of certain media. Like, you could be a movie buff and be like, I want that physical copy of said thing. Like, yeah, there's, sure. there, there's all the behind-the-scenes shit. Yeah, yeah. And all that stuff. Like, really that anyways, like for, like for that. example, all the Marvel movies, I never went to go see more than once in the theaters. So... Obviously, in the first month of, you know, Ripley being born, there was a lot of downtime at night just waiting for her to wake yeah. up and because she's eventually going to wake up. So I pretty much watched like every fucking Marvel movie again, the entire Infinity Saga in that time frame and got to relive a lot of those movies because we had Disney Plus and it has 4K HDR versions of those fucking movies. So they looked better than the theater. Uh, so all, I, all, all I'm saying is that like those subscription fees are expensive, but I feel... I personally feel like for myself, that shit is a way better value. I could just cancel it. Shit is such a better value than me going out and buying Blu-rays. A thousand percent. You, you, you buy the Blu-rays that, that you want, that you want still expensive. Like, like, everybody's doing streaming services or just downloading this stuff. Why? Yeah. Like, how has this yeah. media not gone down in price? Uh, really that's, well, that's a little true, I guess. But like, yeah, like, like, what the fuck? if you buy, I, I haven't bought a movie in Ages. <laughs> I used to be yeah. the dude that every Tuesday when the movies came out, I would go buy them and shit like that and yeah. realize I've spent a lot of money. Yeah. And I've seen these movies once or twice. I, I'm, I had to I'm stop buying when, money. When, when I obviously had to make the choice between like, hmm, do I want to buy, you know, anime DVDs, movie DVDs, games, or eat this week? Hmm. Yeah. No. Shit. And 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 because like you know the movies were very oh, cheap when they came out the first three days the first four days the blu-rays and the dvds were dirt cheap so i used to buy them all the time and then i'm like you're just sitting around here and yeah. it's just yeah. kind of like you just, a convenience you give people convenience you will kill piracy yeah. but and now that's, with that's my think, thing dude yeah, that is absolutely my fucking thing convenience is the most mm -hmm. like i can't tell you how much i'm willing to 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 subscribe to something for the sake of convenience yeah like just the fact that i don't have to go to a shelf and fire up these movies is, is one thing yeah. but when you have an infant and like 
the the level of convenience of having all this shit in these apps on my TV at my disposal of just like firing stuff up and not having to wake up my baby is fucking incredible. Like that shit in my situation is incredible. I've been saying this for years. I got pushback from people like, you know, Simmons and stuff like that. It's like, no, you got to get like that. Hey, Simmons said that. Simmons said, that. Simmons said like, fuck Steve. You're fucking yeah. I, 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 yeah, I remember that. You remember Max? I remember that. I've been on that train for years. I've been talking about convenience and downloading, uh, you know, uh, taking over fucking digital media and all that stuff like that. And then the Simmons comes out. You know, I want my Disney. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to yeah, have it. Fuck you. I, and on, Simmons makes a good point. Yeah. Sim Simmons makes a good point, like, and the, the reason things like piracy do exist and the chat room is the same thing is for the sake of fucking convenience. Like, yeah. like, like, like we're, like many are saying, which is why all these subscription things are working out well for a lot of these fucking companies, which is why Amazon Prime is like such a good goddamn deal yeah. for a lot of reasons is because it just, at the click of a couple but, of buttons, I'm watching a 4K version of Aliens yeah. on whatever streaming service. Up to a point, it was fun when it was one streaming service, and then every motherfucker in this bill in this world just started. Hey, CBS, that's fucking called, HBO. It's called and then now I need a cable. I need cable television for my fucking streaming services. I want yeah. cable. I want. I want a cable for fucking streaming. It really Jesus depends. Christ. It depends for me, like what they have, like right, like yeah, how long yeah. are they gonna have this? Yeah, like, like I don't, I, I honestly, all I have is um, Netflix and. Uh, and Amazon Prime. That's it. Yeah, I, and that's the, but that's like that's so much it. shit. That's yeah. so much shit that you it's have so with much, just like, those I'm two. Gonna, I'm not gonna they're, they're, they're really fucking over a good thing here, though, by trying to like everyone needs their own streaming service. Every yeah, movie course, studio course, needs their own. Every movie studio, every TV. No, you're fucking yourself over here. Dude. And, and yes, as, because as then someone, it's gonna open up piracy again because no one can afford to have all of them. As it's someone that is subscribed to a few, like right now, and I like scroll through and I just see what's on each of them. Uh, I'm at like probably four or five because with, with the combination of everybody in my family. Yeah. Because uh, Jessica also likes watching anime, so she's she got Funimation, and Dude, they have a yeah, shit like, ton of anime. I'm starting to get into anime now. I want to watch that, but that's a whole nother that fucking is, subscription. There oh. is there is, is a lot yes. of there's a lot of rollover where it's like, like a lot of the rollover. same shit that goes up on Amazon goes up on Netflix, yeah, you know, at yeah. the same exact time. So <laughs> it is what it is. So now it's just like I, I, you know what? Then here we go. I'm gonna have to fucking, you know, like people are gonna like, I can afford two, maybe three a month. I would month. never do such a thing. I would never, like, I would never waste money on. See, anime. for me, I have Netflix, <laughs> I have Disney Plus, and Fair. Amazon Prime. To me, yeah. like one of the best and I, ones. I want to get Crunchyroll. I, I, Kenny, I would honestly, it, somewhat, <laughs> ask you to check out HBO Max. It's fucking I'm sticky. You know, here's here's what we're gonna do. Me and Simmons are gonna be a couple. Yeah, and we're a couple. You should, you and should, we're you saying, should, yeah, I'm giving him my Disney Plus, fuck. and I'm yeah, and I'm he's gonna give me his. You guys uh, should get together. Oh, you should yeah. fuck, well, I'm not doing and then that. split sure. your HBO Max yeah, account. 100. percent Yeah, yeah, definitely that first part. So I don't know. As, as soon as like HBO Max had all the Studio Ghibli movies and like all the Batman movies and everything, I was like, okay, you got me. <laughs> like all the WB movies, like all, all the good WB movies and shit. I'm like, okay, you got me, motherfuckers. I'm mm. sign up for this shit. And then uh, as soon as I saw how good the Studio Ghibli movies looked on streaming, I was like, I holy was, shit, I, man! I was so shocked when there was there was um, some anime, like the first episode. There, it had like some girl playing um, Hatsu's theme from Castle in the Sky, and I was like, what is this? Fucking I saw that trailer. Trash yeah. What is this anime? What what's going on here? Then then Jessica's like literally tweets back. Oh, I just finished it. It was amazing. I was like, it was like the show about pianists, right? Yeah, piano. Yeah, yeah. piano players or something. Oh, like, okay. I was like so blindsided by the fact that. <laughs> Wait, Jessica, you you watched this? You finished this? Like, yeah, JJ JJ watched that one. Uh, like I said, that one Beast High. Beast Boys, Beast Wars, Beast, Beast Animals, Beast, Beast Stars. Stars. Thank Beast you. Animal. I I I got about seven minutes into that shit, and I noped the fuck out so hard. Like, and Steve was like, "I watched that whole series." I watched that whole series. <laughs> hey, you know what? Here's something that I admitted on my channel a while ago that I, I'll admit it now. Um, I used you to get watch, stuck in that uh, shit. I used to watch uh, old school um, uh, Korean dramas, so Beast mm. Stars is not that far off my alley. Like yeah. I used to watch uh, old uh, Korean dramas. What was it called? Uh, Personal Taste and uh, Boys Before Flowers. 
See, only only the only the chat will only the hardcore will know what those are. See? So I was watching Jessica watching an anime, all right, and I, I, I don't blame her are. that I don't I don't blame people I for watch. liking these shows. Like I don't. Like I, I I watched like the first half of like his and her circumstance, uh, because it was Gynax slash Studio Ghibli. And it was like, I'm like, this isn't bad. Uh, and, and, but she was watching this show about <laughs> high school kids that play some oh, that, weird that, fucking that, that narrows it down. Like, hold on a second. No, they they're 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 a part of a band class, but they play some fucking weird Japanese bongo with strings. Somebody tell me what the hell this show is, because I know you motherfuckers have watched it. Um, Isn't her? It, it, um. No, like this is a recent show, and I can't, I can't. They they all Should and they freak K -on? out that they're so good at playing this crazy like. Well, what the Wada fuck is it? It's a very Japanese. It's a very Japanese, like, designed, like, instrument that sits on the ground and is, like, made of wood. K on? Is it not? It can't be. It can't be Google that. It, Jessica's Mac. gonna have to. Google Jessica's. I was just blown away by, like, the shamisen. Yes, it was the shamisen. It was uh. about. It was about shamisen players, uh, all learning and being jealous of each other, and being good oh. at the shamisen. Oh. <laughs> like, I was like, oh. Okay, like so good at shamisen. This is oh. what they like. Is the next anime going to be about basket weaving or some shit? Well, you know yeah. what though. Here's the thing. We we we're talking about that, but there's fucking high score girl, which is the love letter to fucking 1990s arcade. Yeah, but that's cool. Yes, yeah. that's <laughs> it is cool. That's how different. Is that, how is that on the level of boys over flowers, though, Kenny? Come on, see, I bro, uh, I don't even know what the fuck that taste. is. Have you seen <laughs> Personal Taste, bro? One of the best Korean dramas. Out there, live Please. action. Uh, yeah, I'm not watching. Oh, no, 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 no. oh he's like, damn, not anime. I refuse to watch. I refuse. <laughs> Bro, those, are great, those are great fucking shows. Please, the great series. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this, Max. Uh, just because you know uh, how how rotten our taste got for anime over the years, like it just rotted a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it was like an apple that is now 20 years old. She's old. <laughs> um, I did watch on on Netflix a recent anime, and I actually really enjoyed it. So I, I will put a shout out to to Violet Evergarden. It's it's a drama, but it's really good. It looks amazing. It's that one studio that got burned down from that that crazy ex employee, sadly. But it's really good. I'll, I'll, I, have, I'll I will give it that. <laughs> I have a question, Simmons. Did you watch the whole like series? Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's only like twenty episodes or something. Was there a beach episode? No. Oh shit! Oh, oh wow, that's damn. impressive. Damn. I am ruined Fuck. For How could you? There wasn't a beach episode. No. Ruined. Wow. Ruined. Is it anime? Are you sure? It right? is anime. I am. No, sure. I don't believe you. Uh, that's what? impossible. Was there a beach episode? No. Just don't believe him, Max. I uh, did. I don't know what the fuck you think you're watching. Was it the? Sim you think? I think you watched The Simpsons. Oh. <laughs> I, I think mean, it was actually no, The Simpsons. There's no, no way no, that's no, no, anime. No, because I because I don't have Disney Plus. Kenny knows. This. Actual. Oh Simpsons. fuck! Then what was it? Maybe you were watching Family Guy. Probably. Maybe it was season two of Family Guy you actually watched. I can I understand I'm, that. I'm pretty I remember sure Family Guy has a beach like having a beach. So they, I don't think it was that. <laughs> yeah, Simpsons have beach episodes too. So does, some. I just manatee. watched I just watched that episode of the fucking Simpsons, Kenny, where they Homer gets that beach house from fucking Flanders and Lisa's yeah. trying to be a different person for that whole trip. Oh, yeah. That goddamn gag at the end where they feel bad for Lisa so they wish her goodbye by 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 pasting all these crustaceans the to the creatures, fucking car. Yeah. And then yeah. Lisa's like, "Thank you. It's the sweetest something that it's the sweetest thing that people have ever done for me." And Homer comes out, he's like, "Sweet Merciful crap! My car! <laughs> and it's them driving home and there's seagulls all over yeah. the fucking car <laughs> pecking at him and shit. Oh god, Simpsons is so fucking funny. Or the beach episode with the manatee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. Golden Era Simpsons is so funny. I, I, I started, I actually watched through most of the seasons and I got to season eight slash nine by the way fucking anonymous thank you for the 111 bucks to say congrats to la for winning the goddamn finals yo thank yeah, you dude holy shit sports ball sports ball um sports. For, 
honestly, in all honesty, I'm actually really glad the Lakers won because of uh, mm. because it was, this shit was for Kobe, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is the awesome. in terms of like a poetic goddamn uh, yeah, yeah. bow around that story. 2020 yeah. and uh, yeah, and what happened. Yeah, yeah, in the this was very personal. The shit was yeah. fucking for Kobe, dude. Um, Fuck yeah, man. Not I forgot a, what I was saying. Not even going to lose. Well, you're but saying, you were watching this set up to si Simpsons season oh, eight. Oh, Simpsons season eight and nine. Yeah. I started to get to the episodes where like uh, Homer and I kind of like the Homer chili cookoff episode where yeah. he goes, he starts tripping balls after eating the chili. I'm like, this is okay. Uh, and then there's the episode where Lisa sort of has like a crush on Nelson for some reason, and I'm like, all right, this feels a bit contrived. And then I, I watched one oh. more episode after that, and then I noped the fuck out, and I started the season over, right? I started, like, The Simpsons back from season two. And that is yep, literally, that is literally the point in The Simpsons what I, what, when I lost interest back in, like, the 90s and the early 2000s. I heard it gets better. It goes at a lull, and it starts, like, a newer, the, the, these seasons right now start getting better. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, uh, dude, like right around season eight to right around season nine, there was this like, the episodes just like, and Jessica said the same thing. She's like, these aren't as good. And I'm like, you're right. They're not. Cause Jessica didn't watch a lot of those even when she was younger. So they, they are, they, they are, there's a notable, noticeable, like this, the stories just aren't as interesting around that time frame. And I go back to the older ones and they're still fucking funny. So, if there was a moment that, like, The Simpsons came back at some point, I'm kind of curious, but I, I feel like there's still, like, a, a lull, like, a big dip around season I, eight or I season remember, nine. I can't remember when, when Mike Wesker, he was like, you know, I, I he's like, I feel, I, his, his personal feeling was that any show, uh, every great show basically can make it to about seven seasons. And once a show goes past seven seasons, it kind of like it's lost. It's it, pretty right? hard, yeah. Like, yeah, for for him, it was just like, yeah, I don't. He in his mind, like, I can't. He couldn't remember a, a show that was great that went past and was continuously great for more than seven seasons, like in a row. Yeah, there's just yeah. only so much material to write about, dude. Yeah, you, you've you've kind of exhausted. Like, there's the uh, South Park. Well, I mean, some people would South argue South Park, dude. South Park, the, the problem with South Park is that they, they, the material that they get is just from everyday life. So they took that, they take that, and they integrate it. It's insanely it. topical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They constantly stay topical. So they'll always have something to talk about regardless. Yeah. That's so like, they, they're, they're good at that. South Park's so crazy because of how fast it's made that it's almost like... You're almost yeah. talking about like a, a Tonight Show kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or a Daily Show. They, they stay very thing. relevant, and that's their shtick, but... What you guys talk about, let's say, like something like I don't know, like Seinfeld or something like that. They stay topical within their realm of of um, of uh, of writing, so they don't really stay on top of current events. They just go with what they want. So, like you guys said, you can only go so far because you don't have enough material. Yeah. Well, I, some, some people are saying out, some people are saying like Seinfeld was good all the way to the end. That I'm like. Do, I don't know if you remember when the final episode of Seinfeld came out what, was met with a huge amount of discourse from people. Like, I remember people talking in class about it, but also reading, like, about it, how everyone was sort of, like, disappointed with the end of Seinfeld, like, the final the, the final season of Seinfeld leading uh, until the ending. Because it was, it, was, it was basically a regular episode. Like, it, they just ended it on, like, a, a very... Um... Not thing. people yeah, were pissed like, at the Seinfeld episode. finale. Did people did not like it? Like they yeah. thought it was kind of lame. Yeah. I would say the same thing with like Married with Children, but at least um, with Seinfeld, they knew that they were canceling. But with like Married with Children, they actually talked about it afterwards, and nobody in the cast knew that was a final episode uh, of the series. Like they were just mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just a regular episode, and then they were just done. Like yeah. okay, time to go home, and then they just never came back. Fresh so, Prince has a great ending yeah, too. I like that's a good one. <laughs> Oh yeah, I yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you guys are remember, but they're uh, the ending to the ABC's Dinosaurs. Hmm. It's oh, fantastic, yeah. but oh, it's yeah, so fucked it's, up. Yeah, it's yeah. Dude. really fucked. It's very topical too. Uh, speaking of like ABC yeah. and stuff like that, this is this is we're gonna go back super fucking hard. Okay, oh, so uh, for anyone that was obviously grew up in the eighties or the nineties, like Michael Jackson was bigger than anything ever, right? Black like, just man. absolutely dominated the media. Yep. Who remembers when Black and White came on, like, the debut on mm. ABC, when Black and White debuted, uh, and it, then... It and took then over they, the years. 
it took over everything like yeah, every was, like other channels right. were were talking about it yeah. <laughs> like other fucking channels were like go to abc to watch you know the black and white reveal and yeah. granted black and white as a music video is great like that one but then it had the super like dark mj like beating the shit out of like a car like rage and frustration mm. i remember as a kid being so confused by that like like mom why is michael like destroying things like what's going on like I, I remember that being such like a moment where it was just like enraged and frustration as like a young kid is like what the hell are we seeing like in the same way that there was like like simmons was saying at the end of like dinosaurs like these weird like like different turns like all of a sudden and yeah. then it caused all this controversy i mean granted what's happening today it was kind of obvious what the hell he was fucking venting about yeah, yeah, we but in in the late 80s early 90s like that was like a very like different sort of like kind of thing to sort of challenge and tackle around the time frame yeah yeah that was his way of expressing his frustration he also did that with janet uh in the um duet shout. video as well yeah yeah, yeah that one Scream was really shout. good and both of them were, were Scream. Scream. yeah that's the one where he actually cursed he, where he said fuck me yeah where he yeah. actually yeah. Yeah. mac showed me that one that's it was a cool music actually... video though otherwise he said the yeah, word yeah, fuck. good man. Yeah, and you could see like that, that. That's just their way of expressing their frustration during. The, I the I actually time. really like the frustrated Michael songs, like uh, "Just Leave Me Alone." Yeah, like, that yeah, sounds yeah. fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, Don't yeah. Just leave me alone. Leave like, like, like his his body is the roll. His his life is a roller coaster, and his body is literally the roller coaster. As the paparazzi's <laughs> like, the dogs of the paparazzi are taking pictures of him and shit. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> To uh, go yeah, substitute it, man. summer school at this different school over the summers, and when we were tra like, in California, you're you're trapped inside. Like you can't take the students out for recess mm -hmm. because it's, it's 116 and it is illegal mm -hmm. <laughs> to do so. So we have to like stay in the classroom all day, right? And so for their break time, they would play MJ's whatever Just Dance version they had. Mm -hmm. And so it was cool because it had a lot of the music videos on it. And so we would just be listening to old MJ music all day. And he had a really cool one that was an, it was an, sort of an angry one about ghosts, ghosts of jealousy or something where it's like a bunch of angry people mob go to like a haunted house. kind of Oh, thing. yeah, that was like, yeah, like a sort of oh, his yeah, yeah late, later stuff. Yeah, I got in my head <laughs> because the, the, it would play that. And then for some reason, the students loved Speed Demon. Oh my God! I heard Speed, oh, Speed Demon. Demon is crazy. Because it had the animated the rabbit. rabbit. Yeah, yeah it had an animated rabbit. dancing rabbit. Well, yeah. it was it was Playbation. on his it was on his uh, what was it the um, Moonwalker album or a Moonwalker uh, movie with um, I, was he playing was it Danny DeVito? No, he was going up against like this other guy who was Joe like Pesci. a super bad guy. Joe, Joe Pesci, Mr. Oh, Pesci. fucking yeah. Moonwalker. Yeah. yeah, Moonwalker movie. I he watched, like, dude, that. I think I've seen Moonwalker yeah. at least a hundred times. times. Yeah, right? Yeah. Wow. Like, you know, I've seen like different uh, parts of Moonwalker consistently. I like, did because yeah, like the, the Moonwalker, like a lot of those songs stuck with me super hard growing up, like Man in the Mirror and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, good yeah. song. Like that's such a good fucking song. Like the the lyric about you know if you you, you want to make a change, uh, you have to look in the, the mirror. mirror. Like, I think, fuck, dude, that's so good. I think it's Beatles song. though. I, I think the Earth his song Earth. is fucking yeah. Wait, which one? Earth. The Earth song, where he's oh, talking right. about yeah, the yeah, planet yeah. and the fucking yeah, yeah. rainforest, like, and he's just fucking screaming, like, and the fucking forests are falling. I'm like, God damn! Like, <laughs> Michael was Michael was a super, like, <laughs> fucked up dude in many ways because of his childhood, because of, like, what he went through and everything, and that's painfully fucking clear. Yeah, but at least, like, a lot of his music was trying to push a message of, like, unity. At least a lot of, like, his music was trying to, like, deliver a fucking message of, like, like, I, make wake the fuck up sort of sort of thing. Yeah, I think his most personal song, song you guys ever heard of it was um, Stranger, Stranger in Moscow, Steve. Stranger in Moscow is probably I know you. his most personal one. I know oh, you. Right here. I know you. The Sonic 3 ending <laughs> song? What? <laughs> I did not know I was a fan of that song for so many years because I never really listened to MJ music growing up in my life. Oh, made me cry too. Hell yeah. But Wait, like, Stranger in Moscow. Moscow. Yeah, so that, that song was used in was the original credit song for Sonic 3. So. When I actually started listening to MJ because of meeting Max, 
<laughs> That's right, because I used to I used to crank fucking that uh, Michael Jackson album that just like the 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 remaster Michael Jackson album that came out. I think it was Michael Jackson ones or number ones or something like that. Yeah. And I would crank that shit in the 240SX <laughs> as we would we would, would drive around town to go play Dance Dance Revolution or some shit. Yes. So for me, like rediscovering or relearning, because besides like the only time I heard MJ growing up was like on the radio. Yeah. It came on, or in a market. I, you know, we didn't didn't get to hear it listening in my household. Person, um, but like rediscovering his music was like I, I was like I like this a lot, and I'm like, you know why you like it? Because fucking like it sounds like old Sonic music. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And so we found out that oh, MJ actually made Sonic the Hedgehog music. Yeah, like it was like and Stranger Moscow is one of the songs, and that's a really good song. And then I, I I'm. Well, I, it's good music. It's good music either way. No matter. Yeah. How and then Michael Grappler, ended up making music for Sega. Uh, <laughs> Turbo Grappler actually. Um, uh, mm. What was it that he said? Uh, the uh, Captain EO was probably the first three Ooh. movie a lot of people saw. Like nobody had really seen three movies at that. Oh level yeah. When it came to Captain EO. It's a, a Disney so, movie, yeah. Uh, that's people were that, screaming in the theater when that witch came out. She's like, yeah, like yeah, 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 the three D. We were uh, screaming. Did you yeah, guys yeah, get to see it was, after after MJ yeah. died? Did you go back to Disneyland to see the yeah. Captain EO reshow? Me, me and my girls did. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. You it's took dope. me to that actually. Yeah, we went to Disneyland one day, like right after like my one of my family members died, and you're and I just wanted to go to Disneyland. So you, and, oh, that's right, I remember yeah, that. You and Jessica went there, and we went there, and it was the first time I'd been on New Star tours. Yeah, and I didn't like it because it looked like a fucking screensaver. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like I like, like it doesn't feel as good anymore. Like it like the graphics look cheesy. Like it looks like PS2 CG. And then we went right after that into Captain EO because mm -hmm. it was just like we just walk right in like no. And there. Captain EO is just classic Star Wars the whole way through. Yeah. But it was it it was more visceral. Like the 3D tech was older and like you know not as good technically. But it, it felt more visceral because, like, when the ship crashes in Captain EO and the, the theater drops or whatever, they do a that's actually snake. a camera flying through a set. Yeah, it was scarier because I, I actually winced and went back like this because it gave me more of a of a visual feeling of rush, like, oh shit, I'm we're gonna hit something, than anything on the new Star Tours did because the new Star Tours now looks like PS2 CG. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, it, it was just like wow this like this the set design and then yeah it was because it was all the, George the Lucas cool part is that you could still experience old star tours on fucking youtube um yeah. people oh, yeah. have found a way to, to rip portions of that movie it's not crazy high resolution but people have found ways to rip the old star tours and yeah. old back to the future and things like that onto youtube so if you still want to like experience that shit it's Good still be, there you max you want to experience a great ride you probably never experienced street fighter the ride Fuck you, where? It's on YouTube. Street Fighter oh, the Ride. I think I know what you're talking about. It's I watched this like ride. years ago. Years it was, ago. It was I like in Japan it. only or some shit. No, right? it came out in it came out in Los Angeles. It was on City Walk. It was, it was City at Universal? Walk a long time ago. Out in the street in front of the movie theater, they used to have a um they used to have a uh, motion simulator area. I'm and, pulling and went, Street Fighter the Ride. I'm pulling look it up right at now. It. I need you to react look to this. Okay. Because this shit is oh, fucking here we amazing. Go, chat. We're going to experience. We're going to we're going to jump on a roller coaster. Imagine we're at a theme park right now. Yeah, and we're going to go ride like, the Street Fighter ride. Hey, let's go. What's that Street Fighter ride about? And uh, this is the feelings that we would have. <laughs> the feelings. Show skin. Street Fighter the ride. Street Fighter two ride. That's where you Damn go. It. Wow, so you're in like a jet? Ryu. We are rocking it, guys. Oh. Ow. Yeah, move Ryu, around. You're guys. a shitty driver. Move around in your seats. Ugh. <laughs> this is so nice. <laughs> Oops. I broke that building. Oh. Oh, it's the Marvel 2 stage. Yeah. Shit. That's where it came from. Oh, oh fuck! Yeah. Oh fuck! Oh, watch out! See you later, Fei Long. Bye. I had Jin Kazama back there. Oh. <laughs> Jin Kazama. Right. Oh Ooh. shit! Keep crashing oh. into stuff. This is a lot of uh, flying around and hitting shit. 
Yeah, oh, we're right? in Japan yeah. now. Oh, good. Oh, no. oh, watch out. Oh, no. What is he going to do? Oh, oh, I slapped oh. the shit out of you, Steve. Why'd he do that? Oh, oh. fuck. Is that a virtual fighter logo? Oh, God, he had his huge ass. Yeah. Dude, he looks like a. Uh... Oh my God, that is hideous. He's super thrilled. <laughs> he looked like Taka from Virtual Fighter. We're just going in circles now. Yeah. Oh, where the fuck are we going, man? They're just trying to make us dizzy. Yeah. Oh, no. Vice's warp tunnel. No. Blanca. Is that all of that fight that we get to see? It's all you need to see. We're in Bison's warp tunnel, Max. Oh, okay. It's very cold in here, too. What's happening? Oh, oh anti-air. Oh, damn. Back HK, this bitch. Oh, Ooh. no. Oh. Why would Damn, he, it's unfortunate that Street Fighter would never ever look as good as this. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. Oh, oh, he slapped oh. us. Yeah. What? Is Damn, that they made Bison foil? look like Shredder. Is that aluminum foil? Bisonopolis. Oh, oh they're so tiny! Oh no, they're God. beating us tiny. up! Oh, God. Yeah. Stop yeah. choking yeah. me! Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at you! Uh, yeah, fight him! This oh. <laughs> guy yeah. gets fucked yeah. up. <laughs> oh, poor Ken. Damn, Ken, you idiot! Yeah! He is gonna save the day. Was that Dragon Ball? What the fuck was that? Oh my god, Bison's 90 feet tall. Oh my what the hell? Just like in the fighting game. Oh, get fucked. <laughs> Super Bison. Punch him in the dick! Yeah, let's go fist each other. Right in your dick. Oh. <laughs> right in his balls. Right in the dick. Right in his balls. Oh my god. Oh, they punched me right in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we now? Going to buy or going to see Guile. Oh fuck! I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Kyle's like, I'm blind. I don't know how to fly this fucking plane. Wait, are you supposed to be Guile? Maybe. You I haven't seen Guile. Hey, I'm assuming on. we've just assimilated him. Anything with military has to be with Guile. Whoa. Bump. Slow down. Wow. Just DJ. Who's that guy behind DJ? Yeah, who's that? I don't know. Who the fuck is that guy? That was me. I was the other That was me. There it is. Damn, what a that ride. was incredible, Kenny. Thank you for that. Thank yeah. you for that wonderful experience. Right? Chun Li in it. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, Chun Li was like just talking. She wasn't actually like she wasn't actually like doing much. She was just like chatting at you the whole time. Um. Well, that was, uh, yeah, that was actually uh, the highest quality Street Fighter experience I think anyone can even ask for. Um, I what, love how Ihonda e looked. That was, that was wonderful. Ihonda's e huge ass. Right? We didn't see any Chung Lee. We didn't see any Cammy. It's interesting. Mm. No, Cammy was above Guile's shoulder in the car. Ah, oh, okay. I didn't see that. Definitely That's didn't cool. see Chung Lee, though. Just her face. I can't believe they, Ryu and Ken, Shotgun Hadoken blasted Hadouken bison, right. a 30 right. foot tall bison in the dick to eliminate him. Go for his weak point, his fucking dick. I wonder. I wonder if Akuma was hidden somewhere in that in that show. I wonder if he was hiding somewhere. Like maybe. Like a, you know, I, it's gonna sound snobby, but like, I can't believe we were so excited for 3D when that's how bad 3D looked back then. Yeah, yeah it, it was just it was no just the fact that it looked different. Yeah, 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 we had a point of reference. We didn't know. Oh, man. It's like, you look at it now, and it's like, this is fucking awful. Like, Perspective's you like, crazy, dude. Oh, I know, but it's like, you, you, you can look at like something like Snow White, and you're like, it still looks, it still animates really well. And it's sure. like, you know, 80 years old. Like, you look at that, 
It's 25 years old and it looks like trash. Bro, you think yeah. that's bad? You remember uh, Mortal Kombat 3D fucking yeah, uh, okay, episodes, the 3D series? Oh man. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, yeah those are rough, was dude. Else. That was something else. Well, that's like the that's like the thing is that when 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 technology was like especially in like the 90s, right, where things yeah. were just changing every six fucking months. Yeah. Uh, and you were seeing some crazy new shit your eyes never thought you could even see before. Yeah. Uh, it, it, your perspective is like so weird. And it's almost like things developed and evolved so fast that yeah, like it's 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 shocking. We were so amped for for shit like that. And like we. You look at it now and you're like, oh my god, the animation is so laughable. Bro, what are you talking yeah. about? It means, uh, who remembers uh, Lawnmower Man? That shit was fucking amazing. Yeah, you go back to Lawnmower Man, you're like, what the hell was I Lawnmower watching? Man's just known for being like one of the early CG movies. Yeah, it was one of the, I mean, the earliest you know, fucking it's, ones. It was fucking great. Good, it looked beautiful. It's, you know, a good the time. Thing. it's a good thing we, we were as enthusiastic for the stuff as we were. Yeah. Because like, if, if we had... The perspective of like what CG looks like now versus then, we'd probably be like, "This is shit. I'm not watching any of this shit." And like, and yeah. now it's taken off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the chat remembers Lawnmower Man had a sex scene in 3D. It was yes, it did. It, it had like a not. weird, it weird third dimensional orgasm or yeah. some shit like that. Yeah, it was something else. <laughs> the, uh, the the funny thing is that I I feel like a, a lot of the old 3D shit is not charming and it's like really rough to look at now. Yeah, but some things that With like people. Will, yeah, some things now people are actually utilizing like it's retro. Like people mm -hmm. are actually designing games with PS1 style graphics and they awkwardly look really good. Yeah, like they, the, the, the old 3D aesthetic to some games actually does feel kind of nice sometimes if it's, it's handled in a certain way. It's the old Sega stuff. Yes, like uh, Hot it's Shot the, Racing. We the just Hot played Shot a Racing, game. Virtual yeah. Fighter One. Virtual yeah. Fighter, Fighter. You know, Virtual Fighter. Well, Virtual Fighter Two was a huge upgrade from from. Oh the my F1. god, dude! Virtual Fighter Two blew yeah. your mind. Virtual Fighter Two was was yeah. like a year or something later than VF yeah, One, and it looked like, like it could have been in a different crazy. fucking century. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I, I've told it before, man. Like the first time seeing that in arcade was at Sea World. And I just thought it was the greatest looking video game I'd ever yeah. seen. Because it was like, it was on a Sarah stage with the lightning. And I was just like, it was just blew my mind. I'd never yeah, seen any crap. I, yeah, I remember, yeah, the first place I ever saw yeah, Virtual Fighter 2 like it, was... To be honest, right? I don't think there was anything like it. Unless you're, no. unless you're count, um, was it the Time Crisis series? Wasn't the Time Crisis That's series? That's way later, dude. No, time Crisis really? is, Virtual Cop is what you're thinking of. Ah, uh, okay, okay, that's right. Yeah. Se but, Sega had, Sega had 3D arcade gaming by the fucking balls yeah. in the <laughs> mid 90s they had to Wait, buy that nuts didn't they have their own arcade simmons in japan when he went didn't they still have yeah. their own arcades yeah yeah i think yeah, it just closed to... down no, um, one of six did in 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 one town oh okay, oh, okay, it, okay. It, 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 they still have many arcades over there <laughs> yeah it's just that that one that one was unique because it had uh these escalators on the side of the building that were like iconic and painted a certain color or whatever so like everyone remembers it as the big six story like iconic sega arcade yeah um that closed up but the thing was is when i was there which was a year before it closed down they had already given up on that arcade like it, yeah it, like i don't i don't even think all the <clears> floors <throat> were being used but if they were it was more, like the first two floors were just ufo catchers yeah like, there wasn't there was even any oh jesus on the first two floors of it, like they gave up, they didn't care. Yeah, UFO catchers and things like, to be honest, like the Dave and Buster's mean, aspect, which is like, let's treat arcades more like a carnival, right? Where like arcade games are like carnival things where you smack this thing, you get that, you hit this thing, you slap that, right? And you get some tickets and you can go buy not, some candy. I'm not familiar with the reference. What is a UFO catcher? What does that mean? Oh, it's, it's just those machines, like, the claw like machines. I like uh -huh. go down and pick up toys and shit. Okay. Because now a lot of them are online. You can do that shit online and they'll fucking mail it to you. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. You, yeah, you can arcades? actually virtually play those claw machines in Japan. You can play them over the internet no and shit. control and control the, the machine and they'll literally, if you win, they'll ship the shit to you. That's hilarious. What the fuck? So yeah, that's been around for a long time. Like, say, a, a, an arcane and the machine will be moving by itself. Yeah. And and then you'd be like, oh, somebody's <laughs> playing online. You Dude, know? it's like, it's like things like that exist, like... That's uh, weird. Like, uh, it's the things that we barely even can comprehend because the industry of it is, like, so different. Like, for example, uh, gambling. 
right? Like internet gambling is such an insane industry that I, if you, if you start to pay attention to it, like sometimes I roll across like the Twitch page for online gambling, right? Yeah, yeah, that's and fair. you realize just how fucking this, some dude just put 10k into this goddamn blackjack game or some shit. I'm just like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> holy fuck, man. Like this entire, this with big balls on a fucking uh, Nintendo game, but that's not even close to big balls. Yeah, like, it's just it, yeah, absolutely insane how big this industry is with, like, uh, all these people. Know, okay. I had some pretty big balls, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, but uh, big yeah, balls to big. put real, real money like that on the line? I mean, uh, it, was, it, was, it was up there. I mean, it was yeah, around the same. I was gonna so, show yeah. you the picture on, but whatever. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, UFO, co UFO catchers are huge over there, and they're actually, they're not that hard to win. Like, that's the one thing I've yeah. noticed about the UFO catchers in Japan is that... What's-his-face used to play them a lot, too, and you win a lot. They're, they're not... Lot they're nowhere near as impossible as they are, like... But aren't they, aren't they, like, technically games of chance? Because some UFO catchers will, like... Like, the grip will harder. actually yeah, grip, grip harder trash. sometimes. The, well, the, the, the grip will be trash. And it's I, like don't, I don't like, know. I don't know. I actually don't know if there's yeah, I don't know the rule in Japan. The rule in Japan, maybe they can't do it. Because definitely can. here, like, if you go here, to a, yes. a Dave & Buster's rigged. or some shit, and you, and you play, like, because Jessica loves these fucking games. If you play, like, the Mega Claw games, with the claw is, like, this big, yeah. uh, sometimes the claw just will not grab shit. It's right? like one the out tension, of every, every five grabs one of uh, yeah every five, every five grabs, grabs will, will actually have tension and you still have to aim correctly and grab and they actually mention on the side like your chances of yeah. actually getting that shit it's not the fact that they're rigged they are clearly rigged and they tell you how rigged it is yeah so it's just that people don't pay attention to that because they just like thinking that oh cloth thing we do good grab thingy yeah, you know right letters and it, it, it's, they well, are it's the same, machines it's the same with the stacker the stacker I will have to play a thousand games oh, yeah. before I pay out. Well, Dude, I, I... Well, okay, well, here's the thing, Max. You remember uh, Alfredo, right? When I was yeah. working at uh, Tilt? He, yeah. he actually opened up the game and showed me that there was a timer on there. On, yep. It, it was the one with the lights, right? Where the lights would go on and yeah, the you there'd be like PlayStations yeah. and shit like it that would, inside it, it right? It would actually tell you when it was, uh, when the win would actually uh, circle around because um, there's no way to win. There's literally no way you yeah, had to. No. You had to be just that person during the time. So I know. if somebody yeah. won, it would reset until somebody else would win again on a certain amount of time. I, I also heard that uh, they're they're based on weight, like the coin catcher. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got a bucket and it's on it's on it's, gotta, uh, it's on a weight it is, and it has to fill up before you can win. These you fucking things. Does that sound familiar? It's based on weight, dude. These fucking things are literally slot machines, where they have yeah. to pay out. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the whole thing, is that a bunch of people are going to lose, but a few are going to win. Yeah, yeah. And that's the whole way behind it, is that, like, it's literally gambling, but you're not winning money, money. in return, you're just winning you're toys. Winning, you're winning Dracula teeth. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're winning a big, a, a big stuffed My Little Pony thing or some shit like yeah. that, you know? Like, well, and, and that's the thing, they, they, they admit it, like, if you actually yeah. look for the machines, they will tell you their odds of actually paying out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's interesting. I've never known about the stuff on the sides. Like when when we were there, I won a ton of stuff. Well, not even me, but like Chaos or I don't, I don't doubt he's in chat right now. But he he was really good at the UFO catchers. Like he would just casually we'd walk around somewhere. He'd just say, "Oh, I want that," and he would go and he'd play one to three games and he'd catch it. Um, well, so is a uh, so is a uh, Kenny, right? Kenny like used to get yeah, like on time. the non-rigged uh, claw machines. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was your daughters all the time. That yeah, was beastie, but I mean, yeah. it's, that's like the same shit as carnival games, right? Or like the ring tossing with like a, yeah. a ton of like old Coke cups in there and shit. Yeah, yeah, I would win like, a lot of shit from the tilt you were at, Steve, because they had the machine that would have like five hundred tickets. And yeah. you use a claw, and, and me, that's how. Remember me back in the day. Me and the girls used to come in, and we'd have like three, like five thousand tickets, and Steve was Dude. right there. Was like, I mean, for guys, here's the thing: even though you guys won a lot and, uh, and you, you got a ton of tickets, you were still getting ripped off because the stuff yeah. that was there. A little bit, but the girls had fun and stuff. Yeah, I know that's what matters. But I got, I got a that. game that we definitely didn't get ripped off at because you, you worked there, Steve. I don't yeah. know if you did. You did you work at the one the tilt in the mall bef before oh, before the mall changed? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, so I, it was I one down by the food court with that Alfredo worked at, right? Yeah, yeah. I moved with them. Okay, so and I think they changed it eventually because I think they made it distribute tickets. However, 
and Simmons knows this, and I'm sure you know this, and Kenny knows this. At the arcade at the time, uh, chat, you, you, you know, yeah, Jungle Jive. Chat, you know what a quarter shuffle machine is, right? Where you put a quarter in and it falls on lines of other quarters that are moving like in and out, and they will push other quarters off. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, what happened in an arcade and in, in the arcade that we frequented, like our our fucking our, our arcade, which was yeah. the tilt on the mall, where yeah. we played Marvel 2 and Marvel 1 and everything. This arcade had a jungle jive that was very like manipulatable, it felt in many ways. <laughs> because I would okay. go I would go with five bucks and I would leave every fucking time with $20 full of tokens. Yeah. Every fucking time. So this jungle jive, like, and if you knew the arcade, you knew how to manipulate it. It didn't distribute tickets at first. It distributed tokens. So yeah. you'd put in a quarter and the quarter would drop and then it would drop like, you know, you'd get lucky. Oh. It would drop five quarters and that would turn directly into five tokens. So you're like, oh shit, you would be able to, if you were smart at that, that, that version of the game, they did change it, right? They changed it because it was literally fucking gambling. Yeah, no, no, they, they stopped it. It was yeah, gambling. Because was too many people gambling. were good at that shit. So everyone that was fighting game players in the arcade would be sitting over playing the fucking coin shuffling jungle jive oh, in yeah, between but, matches. Go, Max. I'm going to give you some memory berries. I can't hear it. Oh, I think you have sound suppression. <laughs> Uh, you, you have sound suppression on, Kenny. You have to talk during it. Oh, here we go. Now listen to this. Oh, damn it. Okay, here we yeah. go. Here we go. You have All to right. turn off your sound All right, suppression. Here we go. Check this out. See if you remember this. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Can you hear this? No, we can't. Uh, <laughs> now we can't. Yeah, you, you, you have to literally go into Discord and turn off your sound suppression. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yes, those noises. I, and it's weird, like, I almost, there was moments where I was going back, I'm like 13 or 14 years old, right? I'm going back to the arcade to play Marvel 1, and I gotta go make some money uh, on Jungle Jive to play more Marvel 1, because I need to play more, right? I'm gonna be there for like 8 hours, I can't fucking, I, I gotta go. Sometimes it was risk reward. Yeah, well, sometimes it was. Good, yeah. But I was, I was, I got, I got so good at this shit that I'm like, do I want to go to the arcade to play Marvel 1, or do I want to go to the arcade to play Jungle Jive? <laughs> <laughs> and I like, and I, I, I discovered in myself that I have like a secret sort of addiction for those sort of games now because me and Jessica came across some more of them at uh, dude, the David Trek Buster's. Game. The goddamn Star Trek one, dude. They have yes. this Star Trek David Buster's game that drops like Star Trek cards and big to tokens and regular size tokens that it is such a thrill. I think to you still have all those tokens and cards at your house. Because who's going back to David Buster's? The goddamn place is Plague Zone now. Like yeah. it's gonna, I, I we still we we Honestly, won that shit have so enough, much. You have enough of those things to get a switch. I do. To be honest, I actually do. <laughs> uh, we 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 won that Star Trek game so fucking much that I think I can buy a PS4 or some shit. You know what? Those cards that we did stuff like that, but we never really became like gambling addicts. It's because we knew we could win at those particular games. You know what I yeah. mean? Like there wasn't that much of like just random chance on like you know a lot of money and stuff like that. Like I I, I know I don't like putting all that effort into chance like i want to make sure that i i at least i have a chance like a, a certain level of skill has to be implemented in there that's why okay. i respect um there's the uh, poker that's why i respect poker because mm -hmm. poker there is a level of skill like well, even poker's, though, poker's a game of psychology yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you you definitely have to be able to um uh understand your opponents as opposed to just understanding the game so here's one with with without without getting too like personal or introspective. Uh, I know we were talking about like like guilty pleasure sweet stuff. What mm -hmm. is what's that thing that you were fucking addicted to, right? Like either it's a game or something. It doesn't have to be like hard drugs. Like <laughs> what was Crack. what was the thing that you like growing up or otherwise that like actually you could admit like oh I was addicted as fuck to like to 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 that thing. Uh, I'd start with Simmons. Can you identify anything? Was there like a thing you were addicted to? Like either buying or playing or whatever? Or wanting mm. to- Were you addicted to anime conventions? Because I would fucking say that you were. Uh, but I mean, I was I was an adult by the time I was going to Well, those. sure, sure. I'm so- and, but still. And you're the enabler on that because you, you're the one who- <laughs> Yeah. Matt's <laughs> the enabler. Matt is your pusher. See, I didn't know <laughs> they existed until Max told That's me That's true. About it. 
there, there, were, there was a it. there was a brief like year or so where I was really into going to any cons possible in the early 2000s and then the Simmons like started tagging along halfway through it and then Simmons went to cons for like five fucking years like yeah, anytime I'm, there was a con Simmons was there I was like I met a lot of I have a lot of great friends I met there so it was social for me but um I was honestly like for me it was it was a lot I mean gaming was always kind of like sometimes it went away but like gaming was a big thing you know always like game boy stuff or just anything i could get my hands on you know related to video gaming in a way like arcades was kind of a thing but it's like because my i guess i'm a similar to you in a way where it's like my younger years i was i grew up in a different place like you grew up in the mountains right yeah. so you didn't really have a tilt or an arcade you know no that, i i valued cool. that shit when i got to go yeah until it was much later right so later on like sort of like the back half of my childhood then it was like oh fuck uh, go to the mall hang out like you know do do stuff there like uh, abuse abuse the games at at the tilt so you could get more quarters you know um, sure which i did and and um you know, uh, just just doing stuff like that. Like we would abuse that fucking poor newsstand. We'd buy a cup. <gasps> oh my god! No, that was more abuse and less addiction. Okay, because we, like, we, everyone worked in the mall. Okay, we about? definitely when you're when, okay, dude. When you're a teenager, uh, right? You got to make every fucking penny count, right? Even if you, even if you're employed, you have to make every fucking penny count. We were we were uh, our our diet, my diet i'm not even kidding you when i worked at the mall my first like real job when i worked at the mall my diet was going down to panda express buying a dollar 19 uh white rice like small to go uh serving Ball from rice. from fucking panda express asking them for so sweet and sour sauce some soy sauce and i would mix it up and that would be my dinner right because yeah. you don't have fucking money to survive like i was spending all my money on gas to drive from as far as i would to get to actually have my job no, so dude there was a newsstand with an open uh, with an open, what's it called? Soda like fountain. soda fountain. So anyone who's fucking at the mall knows this story. Yeah, there was an open so soda dispenser and they would offer free refills. There was no asterisk next to this free refill thing. So everyone at my store would have a cup that that and these fucking cups they would they would disintegrate like they were goddamn like biotic like they would they would just slowly crumble and disintegrate over like four days but we would clean the cups and we would save them in the back room so that when we would go back down <laughs> even when even when the newsstand just fucking opened and you clearly had not bought a cup that day, you just roll up and refill that shit and walk There's out. No shame out. in your eyes. No shame. No shame at all. The guy just that's running it is like, walk out proud. The guy, guy just giving you the laser eyes. This mother, <laughs> these motherfuckers. Like, what, it's your cup from your place. I totally bought it. <laughs> No shame. So, there was at least seven cups in the back room. <laughs> like, of just, like, cups of, like, varying degrees of degradation. <laughs> that yeah. We, yeah, this one's mine. That one's yours. This one's yeah. mine from two days ago. I gotta use this one. <laughs> like, we had to make money. And then you had to make like, money count, dude. Didn't okay. Yeah. Didn't like, that was me. One time where, like, you left it in your 240 in, in that hot sun. The bottom and just the bottom blew out. out. Yeah, yep. and I just had, like, a cup holder full of Mountain Dew. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, what God. the fuck? This uh -huh. is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I no. remember that. I remember the that box. was <laughs> that was me when I worked at the Apple Store and the Wetzel's pretzels would give you dollar refills. But if you were cool with the girls are there and you know were really nice, they would fill it up for you for free. You definitely made friends. You at had to the make food friends court. at the mall. You at made mall, friends at the food court. Yeah, making friends at the mall was fucking imperative, dude. Yeah. Dude, at you the know, food it's court or yeah. whatever place. You know, they're, hey, I work here. This there was this one you? one place you in the old mall, mall food court that did like chicken and shrimp and they did like seafood and chicken dishes and I always loved it. Like I loved eating there. Like it, it had such tasty food. It was crap by today's standards, and right? I, was, I, I hated when you would order there because I the smell of seafood. I was Simmons like, hated oh. the smell of like cooked <laughs> shrimp and shit. So <laughs> the crazy, here's the crazy part. That place in the mall. Yeah, chat immediately knows. Fucking of course it's Danny. Danny's uh, in the chat, Danny. Steve. Mega Man DS is in the chat. Yeah. Daddy's in there. So 
Danny's in the chat. He knows it's 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 catch yeah. twenty one. I think is or maybe it's catch twenty two. I think it was catch twenty two. They they moved. I went there again. They moved to another place across town, and I went back. It was the same fucking dude and the lead guy that was like cooking for them was the same guy that was in the mall like no shit 20 years ago or some shit man. i was like fuck man this is cool. this is an insane blast from the past and i got the same fucking thing that i ate like 18 years ago when i was working in the mall it blew my mind <laughs> oh, yeah, but yeah man. you like always made friends at mm -hmm. those places because they would hook you up yeah. They, would, they would give you like more stuff and when they came to the store you try to hook mm. them up you're like oh yeah you yeah, got, yeah, you got yeah, any more yeah. copies of metal gear back, you're like well i mean yeah, I like you, you had like those exclusives you had like yeah, those like yeah, hey yeah, this is yeah, a pre-order yeah, bonus yeah. for metal gear here's the yeah. solid like, snake figure do you have the, the extra the extra bandana or something like that i'm like well we don't have any extra bandanas it's only for pre-orders but yeah, yeah, don't yeah. you don't you work at nathan's uh mm. you know and i guess i'll give you one and then you go to nathan's and they would just literally give you an extra side of fries they're like hey yeah you made friends, right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, dude, friends. I'm telling you. We, we didn't make any friends at that newsstand. Oh, yeah. We definitely, there was no, it was a hostile environment. The bribes? <laughs> yeah. No, dude, I'm telling you, like, the girls, when I worked at the mall, like, the girl at Panda Express, dude, I'd order a kid's meal and have a bucket of food, dude. I'd just be like, yo, what's up, Samantha? Yo. And just, just yeah, drop oh, it. Hey, can like I just a get a kid's KFC meal? Bucket. Yeah, it was a kid's, it was supposed to be a kid's meal. She was like, blam. I'm like, yo, cool. I used to do that. I used to do that at um, what was it, Magic Mountain, and get in trouble mm. too. Dude. I would be like, I'll, I'll let people play the games consistently, and they would be able to play the games all at one. I'd be like, Hey, wait, what? Mm. Don't you work at the mall? It's like, Yeah, okay, I'll hook you up too. So I'll let them uh, fool around in the games at uh, Magic Mountain, and then when I see them at the mall, I'll get a hookup from them too. It was always great. You, always, yeah. you gotta know somebody. You gotta know somebody. It was yeah. problematic though for me because <laughs> like how much I I I valued anything that was like a permanent object like video games over food to the point and, and remember you might remember max i had to i, I biked to the mall yeah every day oh, so yeah. there was a point where like the managers of the stores were calling my my parents and wondering if i was people probably would think this is shocking but like they're wondering if i was bulimic <laughs> oh jesus or, yeah or, simmons or, was so skinny that the wind could carry him away <laughs> simmons <laughs> There, there was this weird point where, like, I had, like, people were, like, afraid of me dying. There was even a point we went to, like, Speed Zone or whatever it was called one night. And we went back to In-N-Out. I didn't have any cash on me, but I looked so frail. <laughs> I looked so bad. Like, I should be on National Geographic or something. Like, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> like, I just looked so, like, ah, I'm poverty. I remember, like, you or Noel or Noe, someone bought me, like, a, a fucking meal. They were just looking at me like, oh, man, I can't, like, I can't stand and not see you eating. <laughs> yeah because <laughs> that was like right around this point where you weren't uh you were like 17 or something like that and something i was like 18 or and and you were just like hanging out at the fucking mall the whole time and then eventually yeah. you, you had got like working there with like everybody and all of us right around the same time frame yeah um we got sidetracked a little bit kenny can you uh recall any like crazy like addiction sort of thing that that was, you like two whether, things as a child it was hard dick Yes, it was Coke. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's pretty... Go on. Uh, Straight up, wow. Yeah, Coke. Coke and Red Vines, but Coca-Cola. <laughs> Red Vines. Coca-Cola and Red Vines. It was yeah, sodas, man. Vines. Sodas. Yeah. But Red Vines, I remember I saved money, and me and my fucking buddy just bought a bucket of Red Vines, and we just fucking... <sighs> to the point where... It was just, I hate these fucking things, but it really? was like Homer Simpson's. Yeah, like, you love Red Vines? Well, here you go. We saved here you go. All that cigarettes like, episode. Yeah, and we hey. literally just. Oh, 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 oh. Well, don't was... forget that we we had. I think it was a uh, El Nino. I think it was that constantly mm -hmm. sent us red vines or something like that. Who was it? That like oh, yeah, a yeah, fallen was... devil. Fallen oh, devil. With... Devil. With with fallen devil. He was the Twizzlers man. Hated... No, fallen hated devil him. hated red vines. Yeah, he, he likes Twizzlers, but he kept contributing, so we had to keep buying them. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he kept putting, putting money to me, yeah. it was like red vines and Coca Cola, man. Yeah, Coke, we, oh so shit! Did did you hear that? No shit, dude. Like licorice is super bad for you yeah no shit. uh no not like, not like not like not like red licorice but like oh, licorice black licorice black li licorice like the plant what is apparently super bad for your heart like there was oh, yeah. a dude there's a story that came out because my mom likes black licorice a lot my dad too dude my dad used to buy black jelly bean. It, it, like the, a guy literally died <laughs> from eating two bags of black licorice holy fuck dude. literally his dad. heart couldn't take it 
My dad, so, like, he liked candy, and it's like, we go to the candy store, and he'd, like, buy black liquor. I'm like, well, I'm not touching your shit. Yeah. That's, a dude ate, all ate yours. Like, he ate two bags in one day, and his his his, co his employee said he switched from red licorice to black licorice because he thought it was more healthy. But doctors, like, warn that black licorice is like a fucking poison. Like, it's really bad for you. It tastes like poison. Well... <laughs> And it, what's crazy it, is it tastes like the bottom of a shoe. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I don't know how people like black licorice. At crazy all. enough, my it mom was would say for a long time. My mom would say when she would eat like black licorice, sometimes she would eat like a bag, right? She would actually have like a bag of black licorice. She would say she would feel weak and she would feel like heart palpitations and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, literally, please stop eating that. Like, it's crazy that there's no insane warnings on the back of it, but apparently it's, like, really bad for your heart. It, it lowers, like, some sort of chemical in your body to a dangerously low level that makes it super dangerous for your heart or some shit. I mean, and there was a recent article that came out because it was an extreme example. A guy was eating, like, bags of black licorice a day, yeah, and he died because he thought black licorice was healthier than red licorice. Potassium. Yeah, lowers your potassium. That's what it is. Ah. So, fuck! My mom was like, Oh, Jesus! Like, I usually don't feel good after I have black licorice, but I really like it. Fuck! Like, she's like, I'll stop that immediately. So, if she wants licorice, she'll switch to, to red licorice. So, believe it or not, red licorice is just, or not organic, but the exact opposite of organic candy. Like, it's yeah. just chemical candy in many ways, but at least it's like, Shouldn't it's not like as life-threatening as black licorice, apparently. Shouldn't there be like a warning label on those things then? There is. Warning they, 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 they warn you not to eat like too much of it. Damn. Yeah, then but that's all they. But it's label. this little. It's this little thing on the back. So then there should be a warning label on that uh, uh, Baskin Robbins fucking Oreo drink. <laughs> 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 yeah, to be drink. honest, we we read the warning label. It oh, was okay. on. It was on the bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I should have been like. I should have been things. fat as a kid. Sometimes, like I would go and save money for a two liter bottle on my way home from school and chug it on the way back from school dude okay so thirsty. so can you bottles uh, of coke i yeah. have i we all did that shit. that's what's crazy yeah. i have a yeah. question for you where yeah. when when can you identify the moment you realized your mortality where like you're like i'm not invincible anymore i you can't do this shit. mahalo days right was around it? 2010 because really? I used to, I used to like in my cubicle, I used to have like a fuck, there was a mini frit and it just filled it full of Coke, Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. And I was just like, I got to stop this shit, man. What <laughs> the fuck? Coke is, Coca-Cola is, well, Coke is so bad for you, but uh, Coca-Cola yeah. is, is so bad for you. Like my, my father. People decided, need to be like, God damn, Kenny, yeah. look at that. Like I have a fucking stash of fucking Coke cans, like, you know, yeah. like. Not to, gross, not, not, not to gross anyone out, but like my dad, when I was born, decided he was going to cold turkey alcohol. And he and he remembers the day, the time, the place, the, the venom, and then where his last beer was thrown when he was done. Drew Plankton from a hollow. Yeah. And he switched to Coca-Cola and he became a Coca-Cola addict. Let me tell you yeah. what happens if you decide you are going to drink Coca-Cola every day in your life. That when was you, almost me. When you get to retirement age, you will not have teeth. Yeah. You definitely will, not you you will rot out your entire mouth yeah you'll probably get kidney stones and stuff like that like yeah. a lot of people that drink soda get kidney stones i'm well, lucky to I never stopped. have gone through that shit i stopped now my new addiction is just pretty much arnold palmer's because i i went cold turkey <clears throat> for sugar and i was just doing tea iced tea with no lemon but now like i don't know i got I, i've got a little bit of the sugar bug so now i do arnold palmer's which is not as much sugar but it's still sugar. Yeah, so r related to that story, like yeah, I'm, out, outside of outside of like the, the ongoing question for you guys, which I have, which is about like the addiction stuff. Uh, I, I will say there has to be a moment when you're like you're eating things or you're doing things and you realize like fuck I can't do this anymore my I have a body and it is it is, it is like aggressively trying to send me a message Simmons knows the one that I'm talking about because it involves Street Fighter 4 before, before it was out <laughs> yeah. there was uh, I'm gonna tell you night, how oh destructive I'm gonna tell you how destructive this was beforehand before we get into this yo video games lore minute um, <laughs> because it's some it's some early yo video Video game stuff. This is like 2008, maybe, yeah, right? Bef yeah. Or maybe 2009, very early before Street Fighter. Yeah. We, we had a preview build of Street Fighter because our friend was reviewing it, so we were helping him like review it, right? <laughs> and uh, so, but we had, we had an evening ahead of us before that, which involved going to the movies and going out to eat. So the evening begins <laughs> by us going to, and Simmons, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm missing items in this story. We went out to uh, Red Robin 
and I got a Whiskey River barbecue chicken sandwich and fries and got some refills of fries and yeah. had multiple of those lemonades they give you at Red Robin because they're like, you get free refills on that shit. Yeah. So we had at least a couple strawberry lemonades. Eat all that shit. Bam. Done. Let's go to the movies. Head to the movies. It turns out we are a few minutes early. So there's a habit right next door. Let's go, to, let's go to the habit. I don't want to get a burger because I'm full, but I could definitely have a shake. shake. So consume a large shake waiting for the movie. Movie's ready to go. Our friends show up. Dope. Head to the movie. Well, the movie's not starting yet. We're just sitting here. And then you I'm going to go to concessions. And you bought a fucking icy. Got an icy and a large popcorn. I think you had red vines too. I think I split that with Steve or not, not Steve, but other Bojack or something like that, yeah, like during yeah, the movie yeah, or something. Yeah. Maybe no, Dan. Yeah, was after. Um, so consume all of that during the movie. That shit is gone. And then after the movie, some people are thirsty. We're going to go play Street Fighter 4. Dope. So we go to 7-Eleven. Go to 7-Eleven. And then we go to 7-Eleven and I buy a large Jack Link's teriyaki jerky and... There might have been something else, like a large soda or something like that. Mm, there was a large Coke. I think it was a large, like, Coke. Like, you know, a 7-Eleven Coke. You got a big Coke. Not realizing, like, what the fuck I'm putting in my body, right? This is, this is the, like, what I'm describing is the moment you realize your mortality, chat. Like, this is <laughs> the moment you realize that you are not invincible anymore type of thing. Because everyone goes through this. You're a teenager, you're in your early 20s, you, you're a fucking invincible creature. Somehow everyone else, something could happen to, but I'm invincible, you know? So, we go play Street Fighter 4 for a few hours, and then the, I've probably consumed... 4,000 to 5,000 calories um, in the span of four hours. And we go to play Street Fighter 4 and I largely feel okay, just full. And I'm driving home back to Santa Monica to, 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 to go see JJ. And I remember feeling like complete death. Like just, I just absolute death on the way home oh my god my stomach my head my face like and my fingertips like everything fingertips. oh everything god hurts. Fingertips. and i got home and i just threw up i hate throwing up i just oh, hate up chucking you so bad your body you can't i just it body. just everything fucking came out of me i was fucking i felt so bad like i couldn't go to work the next day like there was the moment I realized, like, why? Why did this happen to me? Yeah. What could have, what did I do? Like, oh no, something must have been bad. And then I started thinking, like, what was it that I ate that was bad? Was it the, the barbecue chicken or the french fries or the lemonade or the shake or yeah, the popcorn or the icy like, or no, the soda or the, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> like, oh, I, I started going back and thinking like, wait a minute, I actually ate a lot of crazy shit yeah. in the span of a very, this is the thing is, I had like a crazy metabolism up until at oh, least yeah. like my mid to late twenties and I still kind of do. So yeah. I was like, you just fucking throw whatever the fuck you want in your body and you're an idiot about it. Yeah. There, had, that was I, the moment of my like realizing that holy shit, dude, you can't just do that so shit. Yeah. Like, I had that know? same. I had that same uh, realization from uh, one of one of our evos. One of our evos. Uh, I, I I drank like a fucking lunatic. And uh, he, <laughs> which he, one? Tell I don't me. remember. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> only, only All one, the evos. We, you know, we go out. We 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 get fucking blitz. But then. Uh, oh yeah, the, we we went home right, and we have our you know breakfast meal and stuff like that, and you know on the way home and everything is fine. I go home, I go to sleep, I wake up the next morning, and then you know it's like oh man, my stomach is killing me. What the fuck? So I you know I do number two in the toilet. Oh, thank and, you for that. Thank you for the, uh, number, the elaboration. Number two. Oh, this is important. <laughs> number two. Number two. And then you know you, you gotta you, you you always check. To, to, to see how things are working. You now. pick it up. You look and, at it, inspect it, <laughs> and literally, literally, it is mm -hmm. a hard lump of black coal. That oh. is like it is legit. Clink. Turn it up. 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 Tur
black uh, like stool that is completely. He's still hard. describing it, dude. What the like, fuck? It's, 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 it's still going. Oh my god! And I'm looking at it, and I'm like. <laughs> Holy, yo, this is, <laughs> like, look, this is a problem. Like, uh, like th th that same day, that same day, I checked <laughs> myself directly into the hospital. I went to the emergency room after that because I couldn't believe what I was doing. Like, like it, no, it was like, it was like, uh, what do you, what do you, like, not like a bowling ball, but like just like straight up, yeah. like, uh, it felt like one of those pennies in the fucking Taco Bell machine where you fucking. <laughs> Or you just fucking try to like win a fucking a taco and yeah. you fucking drop the penny? That's what it fucking this shit felt like in the fucking <laughs> toilet. I oh. never I never drank like that ever again. Like I, <laughs> the moral of the story is I never did that shit again. I never did that shit. All the evils after the people just like, hey man, you're gonna try to drink, let's go drink a drink. I'll take like a sip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Evo Evo is always a weird time for me because mm -hmm. like we, we get to Evo and it's like when we get there, it's just kind of like, I'm not going to see a lot of people for the next four days. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see versions of them. Yeah, I'll see versions of them. Like, yeah, Kenny and Steve will be, they'll be all part. I'm not going to see Max. Not because he's drunk, but because Max is fucking busy. And I'm always working until the around. final day. Yeah. yeah the OG, yeah. What is it? E Evo for me is not like, oh, let's go to Vegas and have fun. Evo for me is three days of, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then finals day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Even, even the OGB in the chat says like, yeah, if you if you actually poop out like solid black, you're actually in danger. Like that's actually something that's a. a if uh, it's black, a huge a huge. You might uh, have an attack. Problem. If it's black, yeah, take that's it what back. my doctor said. If it's yeah. brown, that, send that, it down. Actually, yeah, really, really bad sign. So, because that's like your blood clotting at that point. So uh, that's. A, if it's red, thing. you might be dead. Yeah. <laughs> Oh That's, yeah. Well, I'm no. glad you're okay, Steve. I know yeah. your stomach has given you issues your entire fucking life. I'm probably so, going to die by some sort of like stomach cancer. Or stomach I hope. Cancer. I hope. I really hope because well, I know. I know you're later in my life, but like the, it, from everybody that I've talked to, my you know, my mother works in the medical field, and she she knows everyone that says the same thing. People who have stomach issues usually die of that stuff later on in life. It's just the way things are. Right, but if I, you're if you're aware of it and you, you want to that, make change that like that, that's a that's how. Right you get get your shit to heal, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, that's the thing. If you're and I already know that you're already on like the yeah. the safe food, you know, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. kick, which yeah, is yeah. good. Like I I don't want to watch my friends have to go through terrible stomach shit because we already watched you go through surgery on stream, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that shit sucks. Oh, so yeah, it does. Yeah. Yes, it if does. it's green, watch your spleen. That's <laughs> what my doctor told me. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, um, no, but. That fingertip shit, that's that's what happened to me. My fingertips started feeling weird. Yeah. I'm like, why the fuck are my fingers feeling weird? They would tingle and then be numb. I'm like, what the oh, fuck? There was a phase where I was addicted to caffeine. Yeah, and then I just stopped drinking Coca-Cola altogether. Yeah, I only I, drink like, Coca-Cola now during a movie. Dude, I haven't had a Coke the in maybe like a year and a half. Maybe like two yeah, years. I only oh, drink Coca-Cola oh. with a... When I go to a movie this, and I watch a popcorn movie. This whole conversation reminded me of when I had my mortality hit me. When was um, it? It was early. It was young adult years. It was it was in that period of time where you were pretty much just playing 11 exclusively. Um, and I was like in San Diego like every fucking weekend. Right. Hanging out with Mike. And Nachos. This, this is when I was addicted to caffeine. And I... This is the dumbest fucking thing I ever did. I swear to God. I was not only had I had soda all day and on the drive down there and everything, um, I was at a 7 Eleven and I had in one hand uh, a balls energy drink. Huh. Oh my god, balls with a Z, right? That should make your heart uh, with a W, I think, like B A W oh, balls. That's what it was. Okay, okay, balls energy drink. And I was using that to wash down balls. A, a jolt. A jolt caffeinated energy bar. So a Christ. jolt energy bar. An energy bar that was infused with extra caffeine. Holy shit! Okay. This is dumb. I guess this is the dumbest fucking thing I ever did. <laughs> so I was eating that and washing it down with a balls energy drink. Nice. And, and I, I like, I literally, we were just walking out of the Seven Eleven, and I was just like, I have to stop. <laughs> and I literally was just like in front of the store, just stopped and just 
<laughs> sat down. <laughs> and I just sat like, my oh. ass on the ground and I'm just like, I, 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 have to stop. I can't do anything. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Simmons actually feeling like what anxiety I, is for I, a I, half I, a moment. I, I, when his, when his I heart can, is jacked on caffeine. I feel my heart trying to leave its body. Yeah. It's like, it. So Sim, Simmons experienced the shit that like, like people that have anxiety sort of experience, like actual anxiety, where it's like your body is sending you a message that death is imminent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus, why? And then at least with Simmons, he knows like he had a good reason, right? He's like, yeah. at least it's like, you should probably stop eating that and drinking that at the same time, at least, you fucking stupid asshole. I was dumb. <laughs> like, I did some dumb shit, and it was... It, it hit me there, and that, that's when I was like, all right, no, no more, like, trying to find the most caffeinated shit you could find, like, brainwash and whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> It's oh, time to stop. This, the second time, do you remember Johnny Rockets? Mm. Oh my god! Okay, okay, okay. Who <laughs> remembers Johnny Rockets when you can get a Coke and you can get shots of flavor in it? Does anyone do that? Vanilla, you, okay, you fucking get cherry, vanilla, vanilla or yep. orange yeah. or cherry or anything like that. So we would go to Johnny Rockets and we would get like a, a Coke and they would shoot vanilla in it. It would be delicious. But the pain that would come later, like you would eat your you would eat your burger, but you would just be overcome with so much abdominal fucking pain, it would hurt so bad. Like it felt like your body was just like on the inside. It fucking it was, it, and I think you went through the same thing, Simmons. It fucking hurt. Yeah, this was like when one of the first or Very second vanilla Lord, Lord of the Rings came out, and then like we were before or after a shift, we decided to go there, oh, and then we, then we did like a just... bet. We did a bet to see who could drink the most vanilla cokes. Oh and my I, god! Oh my god! Why would yeah. you do that? And I, I don't remember. I had like four or something, four or four plus. And I remember like just like I was like an eighty-year-old man, like oh, <laughs> on the man. on that street <laughs> by jo outside Johnny Rock. like ah. Dude, god, like, we had like my side was dying. Simmons, do you remember that one night at Denny's with Rodney? <laughs> the syrup. Oh, dude, I. I felt so, we had, a, we had a really good friend Rodney with us, we, we hung out with him like every fucking week and weekend, and he got egged on from another table across the Denny's, a rival table, you oh might say, <laughs> and they were challenging him to, uh, to a, a syrup shot off, where what they the would fuck? drink shots of the maple syrup that is on the fucking table, dude, wow. and he... They, on the rival table side, yeah. they also ate a lot of syrup too, and he clearly wasn't feeling good, and Rodney did the same thing, but Rodney was kind of okay because he had a rock hard Sugar stomach. Yeah. This poor fucking guy, when we got back to his apartment, this dude was dying. I had never heard someone throw up so hard in my, yeah, just, yeah. you just hear the distance. Ah! I'm, not, I'm not even joking, he had like 20 syrup shots. Hey, uh, you know what? That reminds me of a certain time. Uh, chat, do you remember? Because I remember. Soda challenge. Uh -huh. Yeah. Does anybody yeah. remember? Because, uh, yeah, that was a horrible fucking time. This was and so I don't know why I did it. And I don't know why you guys egged me on to do it, too. Hey, you look, it'll be so funny if you just grab some, uh, you know, soda shots. We just took some sips, Steve. Oh, hey, yeah. why don't somebody pull up the footage of me literally dying? Steve, did you <clears throat> see? Did you know that uh, yeah. in, in, in that in that bowl of shame, <laughs> we possibly created COVID? Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably did. Probably. And I don't know how it got back idea. over. I don't know how it got across the seas and everything and came back to us, but some life finds a way, you know? Who came up with the idea of, oh, let's do a soda challenge, dude? <laughs> Fucking Kenny comes in here. You know, look at you took a soda challenge. I drink that shit and physically die on stream. This is, uh, this is a ghost. I'm not actually here. I already died. It was mm -hmm. on stream. Everybody saw it. Everybody See, you're, you're chopped liver. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and no one said anything. It comes full circle. That's fine. Full circle. Fine. You know uh, what, though? At least, you know, we have all these things, but the, the four of us never got into cigarettes. No. Yeah, I never fucking smoked. The four of us never got into <clears throat> cigarettes. Actual nicotine never uh, never committed. Thanks, dude. Like, my one, one side of my family always smoked. Mm. So you go to that family's, that, that parent's house or grandparent's house or aunt's house, always smoking. You're just like, you Not even weed. <clears throat> I, no, I, 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 I will say that the 
the growing up, like all the crazy influence of like the nicotine mm -hmm. ads and everything like that, I think definitely had an influence on me. Look, like, smoking oh, yeah. is just fucking gross. You it's know what? Just, what, it, what did it to me? My parents used to go to Vegas all the time, and fucking when I was young in the '90s and stuff like that, Vegas was a smoker's paradise. So you'd go through the casinos, you'd go to the restaurants, and yeah. it was just so disgusting. So the smell was so nasty that a cigarette was vile to me. It was like disgusting. JJ's the same like, way too. She's like yeah. she's never even tried a cigarette before. Yeah. Um. And I just I, I never got I've to the point where I was peer pressured even for weed. it. I never got to the point where I yeah. wanted to try it, you know, or anything like yeah. that. Or if my friends did it, I just let them do it, and they never tried to make me. So I got mm -hmm. I had decent friends that didn't want to make me do the same shit they were. Yeah. But yeah, I'm kind of glad, right? It's, if if anything you could do, smoking is definitely one of the ones that is like. You're yeah. aware that it's killing you, and that's why it's cool. Yeah. You know, like that's the whole that's the whole point of it. It was I, yeah, smoking. I, was I, just... I never had a cigarette. I did. Not have... even weed, Someone gave Look me at a Steve go. <laughs> Steve He's like, I'm vape. gonna go smoke a cigarette. Steve, Steve, Steve's, Steve's uh, vaping right now, <laughs> right vaping, as hard yeah. as he can. Steve's trying to get big puffs, and he's getting these little bitch puffs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my is fan Steve is really getting... vaping. All my puffs. Pissed. <laughs> I had a someone gave me a cigar at his graduation party, and I didn't even know what to do with the damn thing. And it, it, I probably spent like an hour trying just to get it to stay lit. And I like they're like, oh yeah, don't don't breathe in or don't inhale it or whatever the the technique is, right? <laughs> and I just was like, I just had I, I, I was so dumb with this thing. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what to do. Steve's <laughs> over here looking like a goddamn dragon. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Steve's looking like vape trick. Steve's looking like half the FTC right now. Steve, Steve's in the vape tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Doing smoke dragons and shit. What the fuck, Steve? What the fuck is vape smoke tricks are fucking the dumbest thing in the fucking world. Vape tricks? They have a fucking vape. They have vape oh. Olympics to see which cool country Steve has looks. the biggest jackass. <laughs> <laughs> like which which guy has the biggest jackass? Oh, this fucking Germany! Look at this guy doing a double ring dragon vape trick. Oh, that's so funny. Steve, Steve knows how to bring out the humor when it's true and necessary. I so fucking this, almost is this, is broke maybe, a rib. Is this maybe why your stomach is so jacked? Oh god, a vape off. Um, I definitely say my big addiction uh, of everything that I can, and I saw a few people said they had the same addiction, which I'm pretty sure Simmons knows exactly what the fuck it is. It Damn. lasted about two to three years, and my wholehearted addiction, like I actually had withdrawals where I didn't know what to do with my life <laughs> if it wasn't there. Somebody said initial D. No, oh, wow. but fuck, I really, I was really into initial D, uh, the arcade game. I know what stopped uh, your addiction, Max. No, oh, I know. Yeah, I think, as I've told this story before, it's definitely Final Fantasy XI. Final Fantasy XI was my first true addiction right and, and addiction is something that's not good for you right i've had addictions like drawing and stuff like that where i'm addicted it's to a good it addiction but it's a good addiction right it's it's not it's not a, even video games can be an unhealthy addiction but this shit was like taking away my fucking life yeah you know? we, we, some of us were getting worried there for a little bit <laughs> like and this was before wow right before world of warcraft where like people were sort of sort of aware of that kind of addiction sort of even existing so like this is if this is everquest slash ff11 you know there wasn't many games that were sort of like that but dude like it, it's crazy how many people in the fighting game community went through the exact same shit i did like so many fgc guys from like that era <clears throat> the early 2000s and stuff had the same thing where it's like oh i was addicted to ff11 like holy fuck dude this is completely like that game dominated my life and yeah it happened for me for about two to three years and then I I started I started going out with JJ and I it I was like I have to change this shit, dude. I just can't do yeah, I well, there was me, well I remember Noel scheming with me to, to <laughs> you were you were oblivious to it completely. Yes. But I remember he, he had all these grand plans and he would basically confide and double basically just talk to me to double check to see if it all if it would work or check out, basically. So yeah. like there, there was there was a weird moment where I made my character in in the Japanese server right. So I was playing the game about six to eight months before it came out in America. So I like no shit learned Japanese to play this game 
actually learn Japanese. So uh, I played in the Japanese client and just knew how to communicate with people. I knew how to read the game. I knew how to do all this shit. So long story short, the English version comes out. You switch to the English version, but about a year down the line, my debit card has some fraud on it, and that's attached to my Japanese account. The process for actually calling up Square and getting them to change your card info was super difficult. The only way you could actually change things is if you went to a kiosk at a 7-Eleven and no shit paid off the debt for your character at the 7-Eleven and then updated the card. So this ended up being a huge people. People lost their characters in FF11 um, in the early 2000s because of it. And luckily enough, <clears throat> I ended up I ended up getting a guy that actually was a Japanese player uh, do it for me. Right? I actually ended up giving him a whole bunch of in-game money in order to do this shit. But long story short, there was a three to four week period where I just couldn't log in to FF11 anymore, and that was like every, that was my whole fucking life for maybe like two years um and i was like i was rich in the game i was a million i was like running guilds like i was doing all this shit, right so i had like responsibilities and it was like a job that wasn't a job when i couldn't play the game i didn't know what to do with my life i like didn't even know how to fucking function I, like and that's actually uh what gave me my one of my true phobias that I have in life now still to this day, which is a fear of boredom, like a fear of true boredom. Like I can't be bored because I got bored and I didn't know what the fuck to do. I was freaking the fuck out, just freaking out of being bored. So much like I play, so I started playing Final Fantasy. I started playing single player games, doing anything. I started playing Final Fantasy 12. I started taking online courses. Like I just give me anything to do because I have to occupy my time. So <laughs> isn't that tied to you? The, the uh, uh, anxiety <clears throat> isn't that tied to it? Uh, no, I did not have anxiety. My my anxiety shit wasn't wasn't present at all at the time frame. Oh, wow, okay. My anxiety shit wasn't. Mm. I don't. I don't think my anxiety shit has ever been directly at, uh, attached to actual stress. Yeah. Really, it, my anxiety shit is completely fucking random. Oh, super weird. random. Weird. So. But now it's like completely different. Now it's like I find moments of not doing anything and as long as I'm with people, I'm okay. Like if I'm with my wife and we're not doing anything and we're bored, I'm, I can be a, I can be bored with her for the rest of my life. Yeah. But, <laughs> dude, like I fucking, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't even function anymore. So it was, it was a legit like addiction that I had to overcome and uh, overcoming it took like intervention and I think it was honestly like Jessica like other things that had to be more important like I remember just I remember waking up and going to work in the morning and like going back home to play FF11 like every day like looking at myself saying my life will start eventually but not today I gotta hunt Valkram Emperor you know <laughs> <laughs> not today. Not that today. Was the term. Not today. We gotta go. We gotta go camp Fafnir. Not today, there, there, dude. There, yeah, there yeah. was a group of you. I thought you were all literally losing your fucking minds. Yeah, and uh, we had friends uh, that were Malcolm. enabling it, right? Yeah. All of our friends, dude Simmons. We still have friends that do that shit. Yeah, I, I when, when we have your your big get together. Well, not now because the apocalypse, but. Last when year. you have your yeah, last year, you, you, someone's like, "Oh yeah, I'm playing." Some of them have like given up on fourteen and have gone back to eleven. Gone back to eleven, yeah. And I'm just like, I thought you and like, what is this now? Fifteen years ago, I'm like, I thought you were losing your fucking minds looking for the 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 Valkram Emperor because he dropped a pin. So you would sit on a beach. That's how I made my millions <laughs> in that game. Yeah, you would sit on a beach and you would do this thing where you would like uh, scan. scan scan the beach. People and thought then, I cheated. You know, I was just so fucking good at yeah. it. Like, and, and then you do it because, like, you wanted this this rare monster to spawn, and he would spawn every three hours, and then he would kill him, and then he would maybe, hopefully, drop this pin. And I was like, this is, I, I, I like, listening to it because I didn't really get into the game. I was like, you guys are all fucking insane. You have lost your goddamn minds. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, from the outside looking in, it, it, had, it had seemed like, it seemed like you had all gone gone loony. <laughs> How old was I when this happened? About like 19 to 21-ish? Like right around that time frame? Because I started seeing JJ when I was around 21. <laughs> so right around that time frame, like 19 years old-ish. Right or very early 20s. So... Fuck man, yeah, that was that was definitely mine, and I'm I and that's why I still say to people like you should get into FF14, and I'll try it. You should get into this. You should get. Into, I will never be able to get into anything the same degree that I got into FF11 because I have that perspective, you know. Mm.
But I'm 22. That is true. Yeah, that seems to be very confusing, right, yeah, chat? That's pretty, yeah, that's not that long ago. I know, it's man. weird. It's not that long ago. It was like yesterday. We were yeah. definitely addicted to PSO, but like th that shit of scanning for for a bug on a beach for three hours. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is no. That's that, crazy. That, that was a bridge too far for yeah, me. Yeah, I was. I, I was I, I'd say I was definitely like addicted to PSO. I was definitely like addicted to even Monster Hunter World. Like me and JJ were super addicted to that game. But to, would I ever be ad addicted to the degree, right? To to an actual degree where it's like affecting your fucking like your life is depending on this thing. That's that's an addiction, man. Like, you know where you realize it's affecting your life. That's why I didn't want to play WoW, because I'm like, I could probably get addicted to this, because I always liked Diablo and, like, all these other games, and, like, I had friends that put crazy hours into it. I'm just like, I'm going to sip this game. Yeah, getting yeah. addicted to WoW was never my uh, my issue. I, I never played WoW. It never looked I cool to me. Game, WoW like, always yeah, looked so lame, But I had right? so I many, so many friends that like played that. it and all this kind of stuff, and they're like, yo, you got to try it, is this, this, and that, and like, fucking, I had a, I blew an all, a lot of people. And there was I have... one girl that I liked, and she played the fuck out of it, and I was almost going to do it. Yeah? Yeah, no, mm, there's, like, there's nothing that... I, that that of wow that was like man i'm gonna get addicted to this as soon as i look at it i'm like yeah. nothing nothing about and the thing is here's the thing everything in to, wow to you guys but there's a lot of people that played wow well, right 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 like wow never looked cool to me because i played ff11 and ff11 like actually go. had like an art style like i actually yeah. liked yeah but <laughs> ff11 dude in comparison to wow wow was a baby's game compared yeah. to how difficult everything was in final fantasy 11 and wow players that were vanilla wow players will immediately back my shit up up. If you played FF11 and you played WoW, you will back that shit up. I'm not lying. FF11 required so much of you when that game came out. And you're going to see it in the chat. Everyone's going to back my shit up. It took so... You had to pair up with people. You couldn't do anything alone. You were fucked. And you had to, like, work things out. If you didn't do that, you were just screwed. But the, the reward was so great for getting shit done because it was so hard. It was so insanely difficult to just do the most basic of things. Fuck, man. Fuck. So I won't like do it again. Yeah, it's like raids. It's like uh, Destiny. It's like you have raids and you can't do it by yourself. You need a team to to, to help you to get through it. And um, all the stuff that you have to acquire to, to get your special armor and gear and shit like that, you, you need a team to pick that shit up. So, uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of games that are... Dude. I mean, I, this... wonder, if it, I wonder if it's kind of considered illegal because it's, it's not necessarily gambling. So it just takes up a lot of your time. It's just it forces the amount of time that if you want to get good at the game. I see somebody in the somebody in the chat is like uh, somebody in the chat is like saying if it re it requires a team if you didn't have a static you would wait for a while motherfucker I was an English speaker on a Japanese server you think we had statics dude I you would have to shout in the ports of the the game to hope that someone would somehow mystically need your job to come help with in terms of doing anything like i need to just even get the shield i need to get to the next level i you won't be able to do that shit for weeks it'll take weeks of searching for the perfect moment of other people looking for just specifically you to do that shit and would you be able to communicate with them barely you would barely even be able to communicate because they are in a different language. Again. And I still got to level 60 and I got all my AF armor doing Man, that this, shit. This is pure insanity. Like, what, 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 what were you all thinking? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. It is, it is something else, that's for sure. I mean, what was, what was I thinking? It took you to another world. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, it, you, you experienced an entire separate life in that game, and that's where. That's what was the addicting part. Is Close that to a thousand <laughs> hours in WoW yeah. before quitting? Dude, thousand hours? What the fuck? Did you just start playing? But a thousand yeah. hours in Animal Crossing for the new <laughs> Animal Crossing already. <laughs> my, my character at the end... I, I have a thousand hours. At the end of Final Fantasy XI, I mean, I, I barely turned my fucking computer off, by the way. But at the end of Final Fantasy XI, I always stayed AFK in-game. My character had 600 fucking days on it. 600 days. So... Those are some thousand hours of some fucking rookie numbers, dude. <laughs> casual. That's some casual. casual shit. Like, I know people that have played fucking Warzone more than than like I know people that have put two hundred and fifty days into Warzone of all oh, games. Oh yeah, dude. Right? There's like people like twenty five thousand wins. I'm like, what the fuck? I haven't yeah. even played this game, tw you know, a thousand times. 
Yeah, like you want to talk about true grind and shit. Like, yeah, some people are crazy, man. Like yeah. they just dedicate their whole life to that, and that is what they are. Wins. My like, goddamn motherfucker! What did uh, Jesus Christ? Was that like? Yeah. <laughs> so. Nice. <laughs> anyway, good talk. <laughs> yeah. Pure insanity. Pure insanity. That's what we all did. I think that's I think that's the uh, the proper conclusion of all this dumb stuff that we did between finding our mot mortality, realizing addiction, all pure insanity. I hope everyone gets to experience it in some way that doesn't debilitate them for the rest of their life. Because yeah. we know, were very lucky. I didn't really have much. Or, no, we were lucky. But the thing is, too, our insanity and our addiction wasn't that bad. It was bad, but it was not as bad yeah, as, Yeah, we didn't you know, get addicted to, like, buying boats or rings or crack or, crack you know, or, or beer or stuff like mess. that. Yeah. Well, okay, well, my addiction... Oh, I have I had two addictions. Uh, I thought yeah, Steve yeah. said his addiction. Go ahead, Steve. I had two addictions. Uh, the One of the addictions was, was music. Like, I was a huge music buff for a very long time. And I'm talking, like, um, you had your disc jockeys, but I was you know, uh, a tape jockey, because, you know, that's just the era of the time, I guess. And um, I would always uh, go to, what was it, Tower Records and fucking Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster Video had its own music fucking store at the time, yep. too. Oh, yeah. you would go there and get fucking music. Um, I had my own MySpace channel that was just dedicated to music. And then, then I started really getting into creation of fucking music, too. So I started making music as well and uh, understanding, uh, I, I went to school for, like, you know, figuring out how to use Pro Tools and all this other weird shit. And I just Cobra, I couldn't no. stop. I couldn't stop uh, no. uh, getting into what I enjoyed so much about music. Because like like you said, like Final Fantasy and stuff like that, it like takes you to another place if you have like the right artists and the right music and stuff like that. So um, I was constantly, constantly, constantly looking for ways to get new music. I think Kenny <clears> even <throat> took me like to, what was it, Chinatown, where they had like a... Uh, a, a whole um, a vinyl tape, uh, a mom and pop store that had like nothing but vinyls and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I constantly visited after, and then I found like more uh, uh, spots where I was where I was living. Constantly going to stores, just uh, looking up vinyls, looking remember up. Remember when we used to go to I the bookstore? That was See, remember. Oh, not mm -hmm. the when we used to go to the bookstore at the Northridge Mall, and they would let you listen to any CD, and you would be there for hours yeah, listening to every hours. CD to uh, see if it was Barnes, worth buying, or or you would acquire them i yeah, remember literally. the f i remember the first time i ran into steve he was working at the arcade and he was so into music i didn't even figure out his name steve came up to me he was like i'd suck a dick for some music right now yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's what, what he said i was that's like exactly wow this that's man exactly is very right. passionate you know what's very funny? Um, at tilt i i had my laptop there and every time there was nobody in the arcade, I would go into the office and and run use the laptop and work on a, a program called Reason and make music just right off of Reason. So mm -hmm. I would be in there making music and working at the same time. It was fucking yeah. crazy. Um, uh, the the uh, uh, people that uh, worked there as well, um, I would have like blank disc of just like random music. And I would try to like shop them out to other people just because you know I just like, hey man, listen to my fucking music, check this out, yo, it was like, yo, I'm a producer, check me out. Yeah, like a kid would turn <laughs> in like a hundred <laughs> tickets. It's like, hey, yeah. the yeah. kid would turn in a hundred tickets into the place, and he yeah. gets Dracula teeth, and also you get this CD. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So the kid would have like Dracula well, teeth mean, actually, and some yeah, Steve uh, mixtape, uh, and be like, okay. Yeah, yeah, we would do yeah. that. Shit. Always like uh, some plastic Dracula teeth. I worked at yeah, I worked at two music studios, um, uh, right where I lived, and uh, one was like a rock studio. But um, again, they wanted so much of your time when you weren't getting paid. This is the problem with internships because I had an internship there, and like they want to, they want all of your time with no money. It's a scam, dude. And I'm just like, Damn. I can't do this anymore. Like, yeah, you might get experience. lucky and get a job, but dude, yeah, they just yeah. want to hire you to not pay you. Yeah, yeah, and you end up doing shit that that really doesn't involve much. And it won't studio, even help like, you in what you want to like, do, right? Hey, it's an yeah, internship. Yeah, go exactly. get running, me some coffee. Running coffee and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's yeah, fucking. Everybody, food. everybody who has been in the creative industry has been there, has done that shit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what was it called? like, like you get so excited for your internship. You're like, I oh man, I'm gonna work. help work and make this video game. I'm gonna help and yeah. do this thing. 
No. Like you said, hey, you know what? I worked at Barnes and Noble where they had like the kiosk of, of discs and uh, or music and stuff like that. So, you know, on my downtime where you know you're not supposed to, you would just like, you know, walk over the, the and like listen to fucking like pull on albums, just like chilling there as you're working. Yeah. Yeah. It was fucking great. Uh, my second addiction, uh, probably everybody knows about it. Already. We need something more volatile, Steve. We need something yes. dangerous. Yes, yes, you shush. Um, the, my second addiction was probably everything, something that everybody knows about, and that was family fun. You guys say, yeah, you know, we used to go to family fun or anything like that. Yeah, guys, Steve was addicted to FFA. Right now, mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you guys right now. And you know why? How much money? How much money do you think you spent total at family fun? Kenny, you go first. Oof. I can't even imagine. Okay. I mean, like, cause sometimes you'd be on a roll, and other times you won't be on a roll. You exactly. know, it all depends on how oh, what the roll. Right and then maybe person. there was your white whale that this yeah. fucking guy that you could almost I'm beat, and you couldn't fucking you right beat now. him, and you're almost there, and you uh -huh. had to fucking fucking put some money. Yeah. It was. It was. I'm gonna. Tell, I'm gonna tell it was you like right Vegas. Now, from the from the course of my entire life that I've spent at Family Fun, I've probably spent over about eight grand. Like. Uh, I, you, know, I, you know what I was going to say, Steve? I'd say about five to 6,000 for me because of Initial D. Yeah, there you uh, go. Okay. I played Initial D 1. I mean, not just the fighting games. Initial D 1 through 3, I played at FFA. Yeah. And I, to, to build up your cars and to rival people, it takes a lot of... Uh, I could say at least like, like four grand of that probably went into Initial D. Yeah. Yeah. There's the amount of time and money that I spent on that place. Uh, overall, I realized... Wow, I really wasted my life there. <laughs> like, yeah. but at the same time, it's not really wasted your life. It's just uh, it, it, the idea of. That's why uh, are you I, where you are right today. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it comes down to the idea of I had a longing to to communicate with people, but I wasn't that social when it came to other aspects, like let's say going to a fucking bar or going to a strip club and stuff like sure. that. Sure. Like, Right. I, I mean, all things considered, like there's a lot of these gotcha games and these games with DLC and everything like that. But to be honest, like they had, they really had us by the fucking balls with arcade games. Like, yeah. They certainly did. Dude. I spent the most on that shit over yeah, anything in my life. So much fucking yeah, money it's, and it's time almost, and effort. Yeah. But the, the the camaraderie and the people that I met and and the uh, the um the surrounding and the community that I that I got from it was worth it because yeah. that gave me life. You know, there at I, least I, it's I, like there, there, there at least it's like a nice like silver lining out of it. I would definitely say that Steve would always like we've been wondering where the hell Steve and the <laughs> the the conclusion was always he's probably at FFA. So yes. we would go to Family Fun Arcade and of course Steve was there and like yeah. you should have been at my Be house hours ago, dude. Because like we were gonna come here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was, Chad? It was the one more, one more. And if Steve was fighting this dude and this dude was fucking it, it incredible was, yeah. and fuck and like having amazing matches, yeah. it had to be one more, one more. You, but the you thing know, is, Max, more I was the one that family fun. You know, Max, I was the one that introduced Jamal to that arcade. He didn't even know it existed. Seriously? Yes, Jamal had no idea it existed. I don't know if wow. he knew Rio too. It was me, Jamal, and Rio, and I know Dan. Rio, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So me, Jamal. I know, I know, Dan, I know Danny because he was the only fucking Mega Man player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. He was the only dude playing Mega Man. Yeah. Literally, all those guys, they had no idea it existed. I was the one that took them down there, and I was like, "Yo, you guys gotta come out and check out the place. It's way better than Till. You guys don't have no idea." Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. "Okay, let me see." Well, no, if, uh, for anyone that's curious, uh, for anyone that's curious, Family Fun Arcade was one of the longest running arcades in American history. Yeah. It was actually one of the ground, uh, the the epicenters of fighting games in yeah. the entire west coast if not the world yeah. like the games were premiered there's as back yeah. as, as far back as mortal kombat one and shit like the justin best wong players used were to teach bred. there yeah well justin wong chinatown fair is yeah, where no, justin but chinatown, but he came to family fun to teach for a while well that was, was the thing fine. is that the chinatown guys would come to fucking ffa like so it was socal versus east coast type shit yeah, it was yeah. Weird. so long story short like ffa was until it you know it's timely departure in 2012 FFA was like the fucking epicenter for fighting games and we all grew the fuck up there like yeah. we, that's where we all went to get good at third strike cvs2 marvel 2 like all these games for so long so it's, 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 a, it's a giant cultural like and they're trying to get it as like in los angeles as identified as like a place of historical significance like they're actually there's there's attempts to get that to happen because family really? fun was a really I didn't even know giant place in terms of that regard Go ahead, Simmons. Oh, uh, Bizzo, what's Simmons' name? I'm thinking about Family Fun. Mm. I fucking loved that shit. 
There yeah. was a time where we would go, me and Max, we would just hop on down there like uh, Friday nights, weekend nights, whatever. Yeah. And we'd, I'd just stroll up and I'd, I'd buy like a little box of like, um, not Mike and Ike's, but something like Mike and Ike's. Yeah. Like some sweet yeah, whatever candies. And, yeah. and, and, and I'd just go and I'd go to the, the piano keyboard mania, you know, while because a lot of times like some of the best writing games are like super busy. So yeah. I would just go and I'd just buy a little like little tiny box of sweets. And I just sit there and I just play Keyboard Mania. From out of hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Keyboard Mania. Yeah. That was in the back. Yeah, it was in the back, yeah. yeah I'd play I, I, Jesus next, Christ, uh, dude. I still got... I, mean, I, I still personally have, like, a few pieces of Family Fun Arcade down in the living room because I ended up buying their Dance Dance Revolution machine. I bought their Super Turbo machine. And And your friend Trent, our friend Trent, ended yeah, up buying the Marvel their Marvel 2, 2 cab. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Did. yeah. Yeah, you did. And it's yeah. funny, do you remember that they actually re, uh, reconfigured the back just to accommodate people who are constantly playing DDR? Yes. Like, they Dude. changed the whole fucking, like, the giant yeah. window. The like, DDR like, area. Yeah. Yeah. There's all these fans that place, everywhere and shit. Yeah. 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 That was yeah, the yeah, jam, was, dude. Like, that, and not only that, like, Beat Mania would come out, and you Beat Mania, and then fucking be big crowds of people playing Beat Mania. Steve, remember that shit with the... They're, oh, they're, they're, okay, they're, speaking of big crowds, who, okay, I know you remember the, um, the premiere Model uh, one, Mortal yeah. Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 3 at that place was an, a fucking uh, 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 an epidemic. They yeah, had yeah. TVs on the top to show you what was yeah, happening. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, uh, I love those TV. TVs, dude. Yeah, the yeah, TVs had the top signals top of some random cabinets and yeah, shit. That was amazing. And you couldn't move through the crowd. It was fucking like you were squishing yourself through the crowd. The only other time that I remember that happening was, um, remember Street Fighter 4? Yeah, Street Fighter 4. Fuck, the way dude. It, it, was, it was more, um, Street Fighter 4 was more of like a community type of thing because everybody was kind of crunched up when on looking at the machine. big screen. And uh, we had like a, a people writing their names on a, a board because yeah. the lines Yeah, on so the paper. Long. And you yeah, had to wait had like to an hour. On the paper board because the lines were so long. You, you, like, right. you were never going to get your chance. You played one game, got mopped <laughs> yeah. by the best we'll player. About that was, that's not the then, thing with Max. Um, and then you just uh, wait in line again. That wasn't the thing with Max. The thing Back is, I trained, day. I trained at fucking Super Arcade uh, to get good at Street Fighter yeah. Four to take that to fucking FFA, and then they eventually yes. started putting win limits. But they did this yeah. thing yeah. where if yeah. you got the twenty win limit, if you got twenty wins in a row, that you'd get a free soda. Yeah. <laughs> and you better fucking oh, believe like, and that's that how that was some people like knew Max that was the, the best day, like, fucking uh, soda mm. like vicious <laughs> like vicious and back I was talking to him the other day he's like fuck man we go to family fun we're like god damn we gotta fucking beat that guy Max man he's like he, he, we won't get off the machine you know I was talking to vicious yeah Street Fighter 4 was crazy dude. you know how I got past the line Max uh, I, I would go in the early mornings. You'd you go when it opened. Yep. And you'd go. That's how. And, that's you know, how I got. That's how I trained. That's how I got to know um, the, all the owners and everybody. Yeah, the like, owners. Yeah. And all that's how I got guys. to know the guys. And like, and yeah. I would just. They, I would be the one dude there, and he would just chat with me in the fucking morning. And I'm like, I'm like just grinding, uh, just trying to learn combos in Street Fighter Four and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was your. That was your training stage. Is putting two credits or fighting against the computer. And fighting against the computer. Yeah, or then maybe, you know, if no one's there, you you put in a credit in the other side and you really put the same characters and you try to fucking learn yep. the combo. That was your training stage. Yeah. And then it was other people. It was, yeah. um, yeah, FFA is a special sort of, was a special sort of experience. Well, like that, that arcade. My, it was my addiction. It was my way to, to connect with people. It was like, it was a home away from home. Like it, it was, it was kind of like what you, you said, Max, where you were like afraid of being bored. Like you just couldn't fucking, get, like I couldn't be home. Like yeah. I, I, this was during the Dreamcast days where you guys had like the games that you wanted on your system. But I didn't want to play by my. I didn't want to play a fighting game by myself. So I took myself to dark. I could have afforded the the Dreamcast at the time and the Sega Saturns and all that shit. But I wanted to play with people. And since internet wasn't a thing, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna fucking go to the arcade and I'll just get my my grind on there. And yep. you think that you was saving money because hey, you know, I'm getting all these wins against these guys. You don't realize that you're beat. Like you're actually. Um, you're, you're following an addiction. Like you're following an addiction because you're constantly putting money in the thing. You're just feeding the fucking machine, constantly going down there, and uh, that's how you lose money, ridiculous money. So somebody's um, asking, was that the same arcade where you and your friends used bandages on the initial D machine? And Simmons was there. Yes, it fucking yeah, was. Yeah, it was. And then the fucking Squidward guy would look at you like you were nerds. <laughs> like he oh, was man, laughing his ass off. He's like, guys. "This is so funny." Like, Wait, we, what, we, what do you mean? What is bandages? So in in initial D, there's an episode where the main character and one of the characters 
um, are going down the mountain in a race, but it's called the gum tape death match. They the tape their hands to the wheel of the car in the show, oh. and they can only turn the so far before they're like breaking their arm to save their life of making the turn. <laughs> so we did that in the arcade with anyone else that wanted to play with us. We were like, ah, like trying to make the turns and shit at initial D. And fucking Squidward, who is who obviously you know who Squidward is, he yeah. was fucking laughing his ass off. He's like, ah, they're in pain. Ah. <laughs> like, what are wrong with these nerds? They just laugh at you guys. <laughs> that guy that guy ended up becoming like that. That guy ended up becoming one of our fucking friends because yeah. he, we were around for so much, yeah. He became a friend by default. He was always like grumpy. He he hated always, us. He's like, the grumpiest guy. He was he was, uh, he was your friend by default. Like he was just yeah. he was the only guy there who was willing to spend all those like late nights at the fucking place. There was a cool moment, um, I think it was about a year and a half ago, Kenny. There was yeah. uh for, for the area that, that FFA was at, like Granada Hills, yeah. there was a Granada Hills like memoriam of all the old businesses from like the fifties and the sixties yeah. and seventies and like stuff like that. And Family Fun Arcade was actually included. Yeah. So there's this cool moment that we got to go back and um meet family fun uh, owners and and their kids and stuff like that that ran the arcade and they were there so it was the first time we had seen them in like six years or some shit like that yeah. and it was cool to take pictures with them but they had with them uh street fighter 2 hyper fighting capcom usa denim jackets from Damn. 1990 what fucking three hell? or some shit when 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 they were the premier arcade for street fighter 2 hyper fighting and they were location testing it in in southern california they Damn. wore the capcom denim jackets i'm like holy shit like for me that's like the biggest fucking thing in the world because i love like old video game like memorabilia yeah. type stuff oh my god i was like god damn let me take a look at this fucking jacket it's what amazing fuck? all right <clears throat> Sorry, chat. Yes, our, uh, our our Yo Video Games uh, backstory stream inadvertently <laughs> has come to an end. There's going to be no more information distributed. If you want new info, you have to subscribe, <laughs> donate, subscribe again, and then donate again. Backstories.